What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to a rare, since we don't seem to be doing these all that much these days, group meeting podcast here from fanboysanonymous.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and joining me is Robert D. Felice. Uh, yes, it is my job to try to get Tony to do more of these, <laughs> and I always will do so when I get the chance. So before we dive into whatever we're going to dive into, because to be perfectly honest, I don't even know exactly what we're into. Uh, I'm going to preface this with a couple little things. So uh, forgive me for going off for a minute's worth of your time. Uh, what we are going to do here is we're going to run down the things that have happened for the Disney Investor Day 2020, which I have not actually looked into. We're going to get my first reactions to these kind of things. But before we do that, I want to just clear up uh, some of the like plug side of things, just in case people aren't aware. So, yeah, we haven't been doing a whole lot of stuff on here. And part of the reason why is because not much has been happening this year as far as like movies and everything goes. Normally, I would be doing at least one review point a month because there's normally at least one movie per month that I'll see. And it's just not been the thing. They've been popping up mostly just a few crappy movies here and there on streaming platforms. And when it comes to something like Tenet, I didn't go see it in theaters because I didn't feel like that was a safe enough thing to do. So I haven't seen it yet. It hasn't come out yet. Oh, we're going to we're gonna fix that, pal. I'm going to have to check that out as soon as I can. I did check out New Mutants, but I just hated it so much that I didn't want to do a review point for it. <laughs> so... That's kind of one of the reasons why we've been so absent lately on this channel. And I've been trying to do some more written stuff. So if you are just following us on this YouTube channel or on the uh, Amazon Music side of things or Stitcher or Spotify or iTunes or Google Podcast or anything like that, then you're feeling like we're totally absent. Why haven't we been doing fan tracks? Why haven't we been ever? WWE has been insane. And that's been taking up all my time with Smart Out Moment. But I do desperately want to do more stuff here. So Rob... Convince me to do this tonight. I've set aside the time to be able to do this. And if you want to make sure that we do more on here, the best way to do that is to subscribe in some fashion to the Patreon. Now, the Patreon has a bunch of different tiers. Even $1 can actually go a long way, especially the more people that do that. So if you think that we could potentially give you a dollar's worth of entertainment a month, consider donating it sounds kind of uh i don't know i don't like to beg kind of a thing but it's like yeah that could go a long way because there's also the pick your poison tier and that is the type of thing that man if you're like these guys need to watch such and such and do a fan tracks i really want them to do it that's how you can request that and i guess five for instance has been hearing that i've been having power rangers on my mind a lot lately and he's like you know you guys should watch the the power rangers movie if you guys want us to do those kind of things then then we will but this is too big of a thing not for us to take care of, at least in some fashion. And it follows up on the last one of these that we did, which was at the beginning of the year. It was in March where we were talking about some of the film slates and the release schedules that were originally supposed to happen in 2020 and 2021 for Marvel and DC movies. Of course, we thought at that time, ah, this pandemic's going to be like a month. <laughs> yeah so that ended up not being the case here we are in december and i'm currently looking at this as being like yeah i guess life's not going to get back to normal until like 2030 or something you know but um what we've got going on here is they've announced apparently quite a few things i know some people have been saying that there's a lot and i have no idea what it is so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check on some different websites, check on, I've got the PDF here of their, uh, the Walt Disney company.com's, um, like their slideshow. Shoot that over to me. I could actually use that. So I'm going to send that over to you here on Skype. And it's going to be one of those podcasts where we don't have a full layout. We're going to bounce around lots of topics and we're going to kind of be a little, wow, ah, like, you know, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully, We've got a lot of good things that are coming our way that we'll talk a lot of interesting things about. And I want to know what you have to say about all these topics. So while we're going along here, whatever, if you've got some things in mind, drop a comment below on whatever platform you're listening to us. If it has a platform that has comments on it. And if you're over on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, double check to make sure that you are subscribed, ring that little notification bell, hit the applause button if it's up on there. 
uh, you know, if you want to join things all over these different things, you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, you do all that. Everything that you do is greatly, greatly appreciated. So I don't even know where to start, but I'm going to look on this thing on this slideshow and we're going to go a little bit through there. Now, I'm not going to read this information in this presentation, including financial estimates and blah, blah, blah. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I'm already going to skip that. Listen to an investor call. It's the standard thing they say at the beginning of everyone. Is that the uh, where it's like the really soft voice where it'll be like yeah. further changes in domestic and global yeah. economic conditions and competitive conditions, health concerns, consumer preferences, willingness to pay for an expense. Yeah, we're not we're not going to bore the exactly. whole uh, thing like that. I'm assuming the breakdown of this is basically. Legal jargon, blah, 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 TLDR, COVID, Security Act form, uh, released expense, you know, like that kind of sign on the dotted line, blah, blah, don't hold us to any of these things. We might change. Card subject to change, that kind of thing. But let's see what we got here. It says Marvel 10 series. So 10 new series from Marvel. 10 new Star Wars series. Correct. It says Disney Pixar 15 series. Correct. 15 features from Disney and Pixar. Correct. And we got The Mandalorian. So it just says The Mandalorian on this. Right? I'm not going to do a video uh, breakdown of this because that would just be the editing would be too hard. Sorry, everybody. But um, the picture is just it says The Mandalorian. So, so a lot of I went through the slides. A lot of them are very... Uh, Hey, look how good ESPN Plus is doing. Look at how good Hulu is doing. So I'm going to direct you to that Verge article I sent. Well, you know what? They don't I, actually... I'm going to still scroll through this because if they do have that information, that might be kind of fun too. So they've just got Mandalorian up. Mandalorian is fantastic. Uh, if Dave Filoni yeah. would have done the sequel trilogy, it would have been great. I'm certain of it. And Kathleen Kennedy and that group, just they, did, they literally admitted that they didn't have a game plan. I don't know how you do that with the best like blockbuster franchise in the history of franchises. You just go, I don't know, we'll figure it out. God, it's so frustrating. But the Mandalorian is amazing. Like Grogu being all fucking cute. I um, love Grogu. Okay, like Grogu has been just a consistent hit. And now I thank you. I, this is a uh, Thursday night, eleven twenty-five. So the next episode of the Mandalorian hasn't come out yet. But I love how in the first, uh, the first scene of the last episode, he's just like Grogu, and then he goes, eh? and he's like, <laughs> he's just kind of like, oh, I need cute. <laughs> like, okay. mm -hmm. So they got a slide of Disney Pixar Soul, which I don't know too much about, but I know it's coming out on Christmas, and I know I can't wait to see it because. Pixar doesn't miss, except for Cars 2. I have not seen the Cars movies. Cars 1 is good. Cars 3 is good. Skip Cars 2 and skip Planes. Fuck Planes. Yeah, I have not seen Planes or the three Cars movies. I have never seen Brave. I didn't see... I don't know if I've seen the full A Bug's Life. It's now that I'm thinking about it. Like, I'm about to, you don't sleep. We're about to stay out and watch some <laughs> movies. But pretty much every Pixar movie is fantastic. If they're not fantastic, they're at least good. I was disappointed in Onward. I felt like it was a little by the numbers. So, like, Onward was one of those early pandemic treats, right? Where you go, oh, this movie's in theaters. I haven't gotten a chance to see it. Oh, shit, they released it for free. And that's still like when you think, oh, the pandemic will be over in a month. And I enjoyed it. I especially because, again, not really having to pay for it. But Pixar, for me, doesn't miss. I've grown to like have some discontent for Toy Story 4. Oh, yeah. Because I don't like how it ended. I won't spoil it. It's unnecessary that they even made the movie. Listen, now they need to make a five because they need to rectify four. Oh, I, yeah. They Spoiler need alert five. for people who didn't see uh, Toy Story 4. They need to make a number five so that everybody gets together again. Because what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. They need to make a five to further explain why the whole concept of being a toy was thrown out of the window in four. Mm -hmm. All right. Different story for a different day. Yeah. We did. <laughs> I think we did a we podcast about a podcast it, didn't we? 
if we did, we got to do it again because it just <laughs> it still infuriates me that the way that that ended. So Soul, I don't know too much about, but I mean, this thing just says Soul. Um, Raya and the Last Dragon. This I looks say like first I've heard of it, but maybe not. So it looks like it's just a Disney. It's not Disney Pixar, and it's like photorealistic, but not quite live action. Because it's it doesn't look like it's it's not giving me that um, Lion King feel where it's like CG, but it's supposed to be photorealistic. You can tell that this is fake, but it's a step up above even like Frozen. It's like Moana in 4K or something. Like it's, yeah, yeah, it's like Moana's upgrade or something. It looks like it's maybe like a Chinese, Vietnamese, something inspired type of thing. It's like somewhere along like an Asian kind of inspiration. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I would hope that it would be better than Mulan since people didn't seem to like Mulan. <laughs> Funny yeah. enough, I've never seen the original Mulan, let alone the oh, come new on, one. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mulan was never one of the ones that appealed to me. Yeah. Always... You know what though? Donny Osmond sings and it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see what these numbers are. So Disney plus prior FY24 guidance. I don't know what that is. Fiscal year. Fiscal year 24? What's the 24? Are you sure? Um, let me see what slide you're on. Slide number 13. Uh, prior FY24 guidance. FY24, huh. Yeah, whatever it is. I don't know. Maybe that's like the before the pandemic or whatever. I don't know. Um, they went from 60 to 90 million to they're currently at 86.8 million subscribers on Disney plus. So okay, not so this quite means, uh, recipients fiscal year, 2024 commencing on July 21, tw July 1st, 2023. So they're saying prior to 2024, they want to reach these goals. Oh, okay. All right. So they are hoping for a 90 million and they got 86.8 already. God damn. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> That's how you set goals. Yeah. <laughs> they, they give themselves a four year window to set a goal that they're practically at. That's pretty Imagine nice. That. For and, everything. And you know what, though? They'll do that, and the stock will go up because people will go, oh, look at that. They're doing great. And it's like, that makes sense. Instead of saying, well, we're hoping that in, by 2024 that we'll have 300 billion subscribers. And you're like, yeah, it's impossible. Look at how far much of a gap they've got. Hulu, of course, not doing as well because it's Hulu. But they have 38.8 million, and their hope was 40 to 60. So that's well, why pretty do good. We, why do people knock Hulu when it's like... Hulu and Netflix were the first two. Because Hulu crapped it out, you know? Have you watched Animaniacs? Hulu's got the whole, like, well, we're going to charge you to show ads and stuff. Like, they need to retool that. But I, I read a little bit into this, and I watched a little bit of an explanation of it. So I don't, like, anybody listening, don't uh, take exactly what I'm saying for a 100% verbatim fact, but it's something similar to this. Fox owns... A portion of it disney buys fox they get the fox section of it but comcast still owns a portion of it and by i think it's 2023 they have to buy out their portion of hulu or it'll mm. be like they'll just continue the deal and that's going to be more detrimental to disney so 2023 we're going to get a big change with Hulu unless we get it ahead of time. And they're essentially going to reach a point over these next few years where they're going to either purposely cannibalize Hulu and lower their value so that when they buy out Comcast, they don't have to pay as much. Or they're going to hope to make Hulu such a big thing that they make it more than enough money that it's not going to matter. It's one of those two. That's basically what the breakdown is. So, uh, you know how you always make the jokes about me subscribing to everything? You picking up Hulu? Yeah, I found out that there's going to be a Par uh, Paramount Plus. Oh, that's been in the works for a little while, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, today I found out that they're signing on for some Nickelodeon reboots, and I'm like, fuck. 
<laughs> here we go again. Yeah, Paramount Plus is the retooling of CBS All Access. All right, I I had that. That was that was one of the very few Tony that I was able to pull myself away from and go, nope, don't need this beyond the free trial. Thank you. Next, but like, yeah, it's I'm gonna have to subscribe now. I hate it's it. gonna be looped into that because they realized that people weren't really subscribing to CBS All Access. It's something like. If I remember correctly, they're like they want obviously like the 18 to 49 and the majority of the people that watch their stuff isn't. So it's kind of like you're not going to get like, I mean, like some people are going to sign up for it just because they want Big Brother. Right. But how many people are watching Big Brother anymore to be able to sustain a whole service and people that are into like, I think it's called Love Island. Yeah, that's like, the thing. I'm assuming that they watch that kind of like the trash TV type stuff because it's just on and they put it on in the background. They're not going to really subscribe to a service for it. So they figure let's loop it into Paramount Plus and, you know, whatever. And now Disney is like it's Disney Plus, ESPN Plus. We're going to do whatever plus this plus plus minus plus, you know, that kind of thing. But Hulu seems like it's doing pretty well. ESPN Plus is at 11.5 when their goal was between 8 and 12. So that's doing pretty damn well, too. Disney's killing it, despite the fact that they have no movies coming out this year and had to shut down their uh, their theme parks. Yeah, but that's, of course, they're hemorrhaging money there. Yeah. So I'm sure they're not doing tremendously well. It's just that they're very lucky. Here's a bunch of subscriber stuff, 15 additional countries, nobody cares, blah, 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 you know. Michael Paul. Um, so this is iOS, Fire TV, Google, and Roku. Not sure what that. I yeah, I, just... anybody that's wondering like why weren't weren't we just listening to the things and checking out the actual presentation and all that before doing this podcast? Well, we decided to do this on the fly, so that's why. If you don't, They're, if uh, that annoys you, then sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, don't worry. By by page seventy five, we start getting into the good stuff. But. Uh, <laughs> This is explaining all the platforms they're on. How do you feel about uh, Fire TV? You have a Fire TV, right? I do. And from my experiences, it seems like it's the best out of the three that they've got going it on here. It is remarkably the best, even as opposed to just having a smart TV. I wish I just had like a built-in Fire TV. It would save me an HDMI port. Mm -hmm. And Fire has the best apps. Yeah, I... I had a Roku TV for about two days and returned it. Cause I was like, the volume is garbage. And it was literally the Roku side of things. Like Netflix wouldn't work. Right. I had to turn up like the volume to like 80, which would normally be five on my fire TV. You know, what's interesting is I have a Samsung TV in the living room that has that issue. The one in my bedroom works fine, but the one in the living room, you got to put it on like 70 to hear anything. Is it a Roku? It's not a Roku. It's just... Which one is it? It's a Samsung Series 8. And I have a Series 6 in my room, and you would think 8 would be better, but no, it's the sound on it is really messed up. So yeah, Disney+, Plus, ESPN+, Plus, Xfinity, X1. We don't need to talk about Xfinity. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Hulu, Disney+, Plus, and ESPN+, Plus, the Disney bundle, twelve ninety nine a month. That's a steal. It's not. Okay, look, I'm a spoiled brat who can't deal with ads when I want to actually put on Hulu, so I don't go for that. I really should because I need to stop being a spoiled brat with commercials, but... It's a steal if you need it. I, I mean, afford... yeah, like for me, I wouldn't do this because I wouldn't check out a single thing on ESPN, for instance. But like, uh, don't they have the UFC paper? Oh, no, aren't they a separate fee? Like you have to have it, but probably the pay-per-views themselves are a separate fee. Even then, I've only seen like three UFC pay-per-views in my life. So like well, uh, there was talk earlier in the year about uh, WWE going that route. Yeah, it's not a fan of that. ESPN Plus. <laughs> The like if I had like, you know, a family where I would do that, I would totally get this bundle thing and be like, all right, the kids can watch Hulu and Disney Plus and whatever. Yeah, Canal Plus, Movie Star, Tim. 
Geo, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's go. So we got Disney and Fortnite. I don't play Fortnite. Ever. I still don't even know really what Fortnite is, to be honest. I I, I promise I'm not 50, you know, but it's like. I have watched children. Okay. <clears throat> I promise I'm not 50. I have watched kids play Fortnite. And I look at it and I go, yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I love video games, as you guys will know, but I don't get Fortnite. It's like a multiplayer shooting game, right? Like, It's like a Battle Royale, like a Last Man Standing kind of thing. I just don't understand it, like, it because they just throw you right in the game. Hmm. And I, I don't know. It's, it's for the kids anyway. God, I'm old. <laughs> Disney Plus Hot Star. Now, Hot Star, I read something about. That's their, like, their Indian equivalent or something so it's looking like so they have offerings in europe canada whatever ons is a and z and singapore and they have star plus for latin america now this is like they have a lot of nice things on here i'm seeing like the shape of water you know it's a good movie decent movie i wouldn't watch it a second time but one movie of the year so Europe, Canada, Latin America, blah blah blah. We got some Hulu stuff. Hulu subscriber growth. I don't think anybody really wants us to get too deep into some of these things. I'm sure everybody's good. Like, talk about Spider Man. Tremendous like, growth over the last three years, though. Yeah. So they're doing good. FX on Hulu. This might be a big one because this is where they're going to start. Because they got a lot of things. So they got the Fox catalog and you can't put that on disney plus when they're more adult oriented and you can do that kind of crossover so you need to put that somewhere and hulu is where you're gonna put it have you watched legion yeah i wasn't a big fan i haven't seen it would you recommend no i only watched a couple episodes and i stopped watching it what was that other one on fox that was a gifted yeah i never even saw that one huh didn't watch the runaways either and i um was that one on Cloak? Was it Cloak and Dagger? Cloak and Dagger. I watched the first couple episodes, and then I just didn't watch a couple. And the next thing I know, the whole rest of the season went by, and I'm like, oh, "That's a lot of work to catch up." <laughs> you know. And then by the time I was thinking about catching up, they were like, "All right, it doesn't matter. We're already rendering all the TV shows, not continuity anyway." And I'm like, "All right, well, now I now I don't care." You know. Hmm. Let's see what this says: add innovation and experience. Oh, bullshit. They're going to start doing this. Where they're going to have, like... Oh, wait, so this is just for Hulu, I guess. This is for Hulu. All right, I thought this was going to be, like, on plenty of other platforms and everything. This is why I pay the $13 a month to not have these. Ad stuff. You shouldn't pay anything and then have ads. It just shouldn't be the thing. Hold on. I want to draw your attention to the Smile Direct Club ad. It's the middle one on the bottom. Do you see that shit? Yeah. Where it's just like, send the information to, and it's got your phone or your email. It's like, are you fucking... No! <laughs> QR code? <laughs> yeah, like, don't send this shit to my phone. <laughs> uh, let's skip the ESPN Plus. We're not going to get too deep into Fight Island and everything. Uh, let's see, 92 of the top 100 most watched telecasts on Nielsen, ESPN, ABC, sports fans, blah, 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 DraftKings. Okay, let's skip that, let's skip that, let's skip that, NFL primetime. Sorry, all the sports people out there, uh, not, not a sports Well, guy. right after that, we're getting into Lucasfilm, or we'll get into FX first, and then Lucasfilms. So what's this list? We got Little Fires Everywhere, Dope Sick, Nine Perfect Strangers, The Handmaid's Tale, which Caroline loves, but I've never seen it. The Dropout, Only Murders in the Building. I have no idea what any of these are about. These are uh, Hulu originals, are they not? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, well, Little Fires uh, Handmaid's Everywhere Tale. and The Handmaid's Tale are, I assume the others are as well. So let's see what FX has. Mrs. America. Uh... Okay, I just don't know. Devs, Miss, a teacher. Miss America, I think, is about... Um, it's one of those, like, you ever see the people against O.J. Simpson? Oh, it's going to be one of those? It's one of those, I think. 
by the same people? Uh, I would assume so, yeah. Hmm. People vs. OJ is really good. Very check good. that out, everybody, if you didn't check it out. Not uh, not as good um, as the sequel. The, the Janet Versace. Versace. I didn't like that as much as the OJ one. But Not as good as OJ, but still good if yeah. you that kind of stuff. Platform, American Horror Stories, I Don't Watch, but Caroline Loves, The Old Man, Shogun, that is. Alien. That's interesting. Okay, they're going to do something based off of that. Uh, Why the Last Man I've Never Seen. Re- Reservation Dogs. Doesn't that feel like Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. What I, I stopped there because I'm like, wait, Reservoir Dogs? What? Reservoir Dogs is one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm like, huh. All right, I'm googling. I'm googling this. Uh, FX Reservation Dogs. Let's see what this thing is. Taika Waititi to co-write and direct Oklahoma set FX pilot. What is Reservation Dogs? It's about Oklahoma kids living on a Native American reservation. <laughs> Don't care. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me at kids living at. It's like all right. Yeah, not interested. Never mind. Unless the kids uh, turn out to be Mr. Orange and Mr. Pink and all that, then, you know. Uh, it's good to look. Shogun is probably very good. I'm sure with any of these, if there's more information that we come across later on, like The Verge or something, then we'll we'll backtrack. But let's look at this Lucasfilm thing. We got The Mandalorian. Yep. Yeah. Rangers of the New Republic. Yep. So first things first, we're going to just name these things. We're going to see if these pop up later on. Uh, Ahsoka getting her own show. Very good. Um, now it makes more sense why they cast Rosario Dawson. I know a lot of people were uh, going nuts that. Um, oh, God, what's her name? Uh, the one who voiced her on the show. Uh, God, I'm blanking on it. I just had it in my mind. I wanted to say Amy something, but I don't remember for sure. But the original voice actress for Ahsoka, the one who I even voiced her in The Rise Ashley of... Ashley Eckstein. Ashley Eckstein. That's why I was like, Amy something or whatever. Um, people were saying, like, how come Ashley didn't get cast in this role? Well, she's getting a whole brand new spinoff, and Rosario Dawson's a name. I, like, that makes sense. And or... So they're not trying too hard on that name. It's just the Cassian and or story i don't think that they tried hard on this next one obi-wan kenobi you know here's let's go on a random aside here one of the things i don't like about the lord of the rings is i feel like j uh tolkien jr tolkien that he had like a couple names he really liked and he just kept naming the same things because it's like, why are the two main villains Sauron and Saruman? You just added a Ru. Actually, you didn't even add a Ru. You added an R. And, uh, it's, and an it's M. It's easy. Like, and the, the Hobbit ones, it's like it's Miffle and Biffle and Stiffle and Shiffle and whatever. And it's just like, do you need 100 characters that all sound the same? Can't you just like, it's Aragorn of Arathorn and Morgan Lauren and mechaborn and but you're just like damn it what happened to like this one's beth and that one's samuel and this one's like you know so with lucas it's funny that it's like his name's lucas and he goes with luke skywalker which is like that's pretty close to lucas you know what i mean a little bit but he clearly had a couple names he really liked he liked mace windu which was originally mace windy thank god he changed it to windu he liked anakin he liked luke Obi Wan Kenobi. He goes Obi Obi Wan Kenobi, and his name's Ben, so it's Ben Ken Obi. So it's like Obi Ben Ken Obi, basically. I, I like. I think the name Obi Wan Kenobi. I love the name though. Really though, for a lot of those. First movies, not too many people have names like that. Because even like, okay, it's Luke, Leia, Han. Like, they're all relatively easy names. And then you yeah, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay. And Qui-Gon Jinn is very Obi-Wan Kenobi-ish. 
I will go so far as to say, I don't know if I would make it an official type of thing, but I've realized over the years, even going back to like episode two, I think Obi-Wan Kenobi is my favorite part of the entire Star Wars franchise. Just in general, just like his. I fucking love Obi-Wan. Like he's he's funny, but he's serious. He's badass. He's great. He's like practically infallible as far as being like, hey, like kind of like the Captain America of the bunch in a lot of ways. He's not annoying. He doesn't whine. There's instances where he's kind of a dick, and I feel like characters that are kind of like, you know, like you what he says. That like, what he says, like, I, why do I get the feeling that we've picked up another pathetic life form? <laughs> like, <laughs> but you, you enjoy dicks. Not, but, but, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's specify. <laughs> I like the asshole characters in yeah, a lot of go. things. Yeah. And I feel like he's just like, he's definitively one of the best heroes and all that. So I am very excited for an Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, story you mcgregor is fantastic too he is just such a perfect cast for that role so we're getting the bad batch so i've heard about this, this. As the bad bitch and i had questions for <laughs> <laughs> she a bad bitch <laughs> star wars the bad bitch it's like okay i don't remember for sure we're gonna see of course when it comes down to some of the other breakdowns i think the bad batch was supposed to be about clone troopers would make sense. Star Wars Visions. That sounds interesting. Lando. Okay. Mm-hmm. I hope it's Donald Glover. Oh my god, yes. Star Wars The Acolyte. No idea. Let's see. Um, Star Wars A Droid Story. <laughs> We're not trying too hard here, folks. Uh, it's like, what's this one? Uh, it's a droid story. What do we call it? That. <laughs> what do we call the Cassian Andor one? Andor. Andor. What about the Ahsoka one? Ahsoka. The what do we Obi-Wan, call the Obi Wan Kenobi? What do we call the one about the the stormtroopers? Uh, we can't just call it stormtroopers. We got to call them something else. I don't know. <laughs> Bad batch, whatever. We got Rogue Squadron. I always like the name Rogue Squadron. Yeah, game is fun too. So I don't know what the of course what the they're gonna track and whatever. And we got Willow. Never seen Willow. Not my type of thing. Not into the Worth whole noting, like um, Willow is the only thing here. It's not Star Wars that doesn't have the Star Wars logo on it. Then again, Lucasfilm doesn't really have a whole lot of other things that they could be going from, you know. So that's not True. too surprising. Rangers of the New Republic. That's got to be a spinoff of those kind of characters that we had seen in the Mandalorian. Like. They're going to track the New Republic hunting people down and stuff. It's got to be something like that. It seems like an interesting take on Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, that's which true. Is, which is like, you know, it was they're very popular. I don't know. It's still popular. Uh, this may be me thinking too hard, but like Knights seem more old timey, use swords. Rangers, new, use guns. Here's my theory before we get into these. All right, but we obviously we know Cassian Andor's the you know Andor Kenobi's Kenobi, Ahsoka, whatever. I think if I remember correctly, the Bad Batch is about Star uh, Stormtroopers. I'm thinking Rangers of the New Republic has what's her face from the Mandalorian, um, Gina Carano. I'll take I th- it. I think that they introduced this thing now of her being like the the leader of the town, like the sheriff or whatever, and coming back to the New Republic, I think it's going to be about that. Lando, of course, is Lando. Droid Story, maybe it's R2, maybe it's 3PO, maybe it's Based BB-8. on the color scheme, it looks like R2. Looks more like R2. R2 and 3PO as a movie or series would make more sense than, like, BB-8. The Acolyte, I would assume it's got something Sith-related. And Visions, maybe that's kind of their equivalent of, like, how Marvel wants to do the What If... Maybe Star Wars Visions is like an animated thing about the future and the past and different versions of things. Maybe it's I like Ezra that. Miller. Or no, Ezra Miller. <laughs> Ez, <laughs> Ezra Bridger. <laughs> Not Ezra Miller. 
Uh, let's see. Well, again, with any of these, we're going to read more into them. So we're just going through so, this uh, this slideshow first. We're kind of almost on the slideshow part. From a wrestling perspective, which one of these takes Sasha away full time? If she's in any of them, I would assume she would just pop more up in The Mandalorian. It'll, I'm curious because it's only a matter of time. <laughs> If you had to pick one of these, not knowing exactly what any of them are, and you can only watch one of them, let's ig- ignore Mandalorian because, of course, that's great. But if which I'm, one like, would if you I'm watch? It on the logo or something? Yeah, and you know uh, what little we know, like obviously Ahsoka, Ahsoka. It would be Lando or Ahsoka. It'd be Kenobi for me. Uh, depending on what a droid story is about, too, because if it's just like R two and three PO, maybe that. It's just like there's no dialogue and it's just R2 walking around just going like Ooh, getting all sad and stuff. <laughs> I, I'd take it. I'd still watch it. Why not? You know, it can't be worse than uh, Last Jedi, right? No. Um, National Geographic. I don't watch National Geographic. They got uh, oh, something about Jacques Cousteau. I'm assuming. <laughs> Genius Martin Luther King Jr. Secrets A of the Whales. Not sure it'll be as fun as the fake <laughs> book. <laughs> America is beautiful. Welcome to Earth. Is that going to have uh, Will Smith at the beginning of it? <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Disney Television Studios. The Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Okay. I like it. Okay. I have not seen The Mighty Ducks in a long, long time, but I remember thinking that those movies were great as a kid. Not great enough to own. But I did really like them. Now I'm having flashbacks of Knuckle Pucks and uh, Goldberg and all the the gang there. Hopefully they can bring more people in from before. They got to have Gordon Bombay and oh god, was Joshua Jackson? What was his character's name? Yeah, whatever it was. You know, they got to try to get as many of those people as they could possibly get. Turner and Hooch. Ducks in, like, probably I was still in single digit ages. Yeah, it's been such a long. I, we're talking over a dozen years at the very least. Probably I haven't seen them since I was like 15 or something, so half my life ago. Turner and Hooch, not at all surprised that they would do a reboot of that. The Mysterious Benedict Society. Well, the name sounds boring, but. I don't know what it'll be. With anything, you never know. I mean, if you would have told me that one of my movies that I think is amazing is The Usual Suspects, I would have been like, that sounds boring as fuck. Uh, Big Shot, don't know what that is. That's basketball related, obviously. Uh, that makes sense. That's got the, the backboard. It's got the backboard and, and it's got the word shot in it. Yeah, probably not going to watch that out. Uh, let's see, Disney under this. Hocus Pocus 2, never saw Hocus Pocus 1. Really? Yeah, not one of my things. Never okay. thought that I would really like Ask it. Ask Caroline what she thinks of Hocus Pocus. I'm sure she loves it, yeah. <laughs> Same with, like, she loved Labyrinth as a kid. I'm like, yeah, that's not, I'm never watching that. <laughs> so, quick story on that. I, ha- I have an ex who really loved it, and I watched it half asleep <laughs> in the middle of the night. And I was like, I don't, fu- I, I did not fucking get it. But I was like, you know what? David Bowie's cool. <laughs> like, I, objectively, I'm like, good movie because Bowie is good. But I don't, I didn't get it. So they're doing reboots of Three Men and a Baby. And Disney Safety, don't know what that is. Cheaper by the Dozen and Night at the Museum and another Ice Age. Never that saw. Would be kid. Is that a reboot or is that a series or what's the deal there? I'm assuming probably a series. Never saw it, though. Uh, Night at the Museum. Flora and Ulysses. Don't know what that is. So I've seen the first two Night at the Museum movies, and I I have one, the third one, on the back burner. I'm going to watch that at some point. They're pretty decent. You know, not fantastic, but they're... You get what you're hoping for out of the Night at the Museum movies. Yeah. Did not see Cheaper by the Dozen, but they made it... A couple of those, so I'm sure that they would have been good enough for I people to really get into. I saw the newer ones with like a, what's his name, Steve, Steve, Steve Martin? Martin. Yeah, Martin's great. So Martin's fantastic. If they've got him a part of this, then maybe 
maybe I might check out the movies first and whatever. Didn't see Ice Age. So, no, nah, can't any comment on those. I haven't seen any of them. Oh, Tony. <laughs> so a lot of pod, uh, podcast material, me saying I didn't actually watch any of these things. Uh, I did see Three Men and a Baby. And it's I did see Three Men and a Little Lady. Both of those when I was a very young kid. So I don't remember anything about them. And I'm positive it's not going to be the same cast, you know? Uh, to dance and popping up and whatever. Um, what else we got here? We got Jungle Cruise, which we already have seen trailers for and everything. Which should have been out like... Yeah, like a year ago, I think at this point. The, the Lion King. That. Why is the Lion King on here? That's a great question, Tony. Why is Lil Mermaid out here? Well, the the Lion King already came out, so... Are they doing another animated one? I know that they are doing a sequel. They said that, but I don't know why it doesn't say Lion King 2. Little, Little Mermaid. Mermaid. Think... Now, Little Mermaid is one of those ones that I never really loved. I do see a lot yeah. of value behind it, though. Like... You can't be a kid around that time frame and not like Under the Sea. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't like The Little Mermaid, but I'll sing that fucking song every single time. Great song. Kiss the Girls, a fun song, too, with that whoa, whoa, and all that, you know. Uh, if they make Dale. Little Mermaid more PG 13 ish, I don't know how they would do it necessarily, but it might might pull off one of those. Uh, Jungle Book type of scenarios where I never liked Jungle Book as a kid, but the movie came out, the Favreau one, and I'm like, it's pretty damn good. So I'll check that out. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Chippendale was kind of fun as a kid. Never one of my favorite things. I don't think you can miss unless you just completely deviate from the original. Yeah, if you make it anything close to it, kids are going to like it. Never liked Pinocchio. But you're putting... Uh, Tom Hanks as Geppetto. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks. Like, the dude, he could be at a shit film and you'll be like, well, he's Tom Hanks. He's great. So, Peter Pan and Wendy, I would check out. Peter Pan has a lot of potential to be a really good type of show, series, film. Just the story in general is kind of fun. As long as you put Rufio in it. <laughs> I, I love Peter Pan. I would check this out. As long as, again, if it's done right. It yeah, if it looks really dumb, story. obviously, that you know, yeah. some trailer down the line and we go, Ooh, I don't know. No idea what this Enchanted is. I'll give it a shot because I like Disney lore. Yeah, I mean, if if anything looks good, I'll give it a shot. Now, let's skip I'll over this one. Sister Act 3. Well, I was just going to say, I'll skip over this one, go back to this one, because then we got Cruella. Now, I know that that's Emma Stone, and it's really weird because I I never would have imagined at some point in my life I would look at Krill of the Ville and be like, yeah, she's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> but Emma Stone pulls off that Cruella of the Ville look and you're like, you can do the little, uh, the collar kind of thing, you know, and you're like, oh, all right. All right. <laughs> now, Sister Act 3. I loved Sister Act as a kid. Really? Thought it was so fucking good. Like, I'm gonna that might be the biggest surprise of this podcast for me. I thought that it was a funny movie. I thought the songs were funny as a kid. Did not like Sister Act 2 whatsoever. <laughs> Best part of Sister Act 2 is just that Jennifer Love Hewitt's it and she's Jennifer Love Hewitt, so you know, something to look at. But Sister Act 3, I am down. I will watch Sister Act 3. So <laughs> apparently, because we still haven't gone through the very the Verge article that might explain more of this. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg is uh, returning. Oh, you have to. And, I mean, and Tyler Perry is producing. And I haven't seen any Tyler Perry stuff. I've seen him in things. Hold on, ever? Never seen like a like a Medea movie or. But you haven't seen like any like not an episode of something, not a movie. I don't think so. Huh. Now I. I'd be a little worried, but I think they can pull us off. I'm trying to remember what her uh, character was. It was something like Sister Mary something. Uh, who? Uh, Sister Mary Clarence is her name. Okay. 
yeah, I I am down for a Sister Act three. Hopefully, it's good. Uh, let's go over to the animation studios. There's that Raya and the Last Dragon. There's Baymax. Okay. Um, Big Hero Six was not fantastic to me, but it, it was Big kind Hero of fun. Six is underrated. Flies right under the radar. I'm down for seeing a sequel thing. So I'm down for seeing Zootopia. I liked that. That was I good. I saw Zootopia like five times. I think I got a little burned out on Zootopia. I'd be interested in an animated series. Be very careful with these next two. I'm a little iffy about these next two. I have not seen Princess and the Frog yet, but I specify yet because Caroline <laughs> likes it and we're going to watch it at some point. Um, Tell me you haven't seen Moana. Go ahead. No, I've seen Moana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like... A Moana 2, I'm assuming that that's what this is, that they just don't have no, a number two. An, like an animated series. Oh. Uh, well. I'm assuming so, anyway. Like, well, I, I have no interest in seeing hmm. a movie about just Tiana. I assume an animated series. I'd watch that. So if these are series things, I can't imagine I'd be watching them. So, like... They have a hit or miss, and maybe not because Baymax is there, and I know Big Hero 6 does already have an animated series, so I may have to look into that a little bit. But Maybe it's not um, necessarily a movie or a TV series. Maybe it's like kind of one of those like mini series type things where it'll be like like three episodes or something. It's not really like a movie, but it's sort of, I don't know. Well, well I guess we'll figure out when we read the Verge thing and everything. I don't know what a Waju is. I'm, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah. It I seems like that's, an, it, says, it says Disney and Kugali. So yeah, it seems like that's very African. It's got to be some sort of tie in with like some culture that has like a significance. They've been doing a lot of that stuff. Even the other ones in Kanto. Uh, to me, that's great that they're doing that kind of stuff. It doesn't speak to me necessarily because I am, I'm the type of person who I don't even care what I am. You know what I mean? Like people are like, oh, like Disney, what's, what part Disney of the country is your Disney Italian Disney. history from? And I'm like, I don't know. Like it's just, but it's good to have representation of those things. Yeah. So I am never going to be disappointed to hear that they're doing something like that. Even if it's something that I'm not all that into, like Moana, I didn't care. Like, what didn't you care about? It you get into really... like, some of the, you know, this is going to be a, the Polynesian thing or whatever. I'm like, okay, like, whatever. What's the story? Tell me the story. Like, nothing's going to grab out to me by saying it's from this culture or it's from this whatever. It's always going to be to me. Well, what's the story? So, you know? like, what I will say, and I agree with you completely, that, like, even when things don't speak to me, I... You know, I'm glad that the representation is there. I will say it's very cool when you see the reaction yeah. of those that it does speak to. Like, Black Panther was a, a fucking, like, phenomenon. Movement. It was almost like religious, you know? And that was cool. Yeah. And that's like that, unless you're a horrible person, that should always make you feel good, you know? Yeah. Don't be a horrible person. Please. Yeah. So it's like, for me, like Tiana is not for me. It's not for a straight white guy in his thirties. You know what I mean? But even a straight white guy in his thirties, if the story's good, shit, I'll watch it. Of course I will, you know? And um, even if it's not for me or whatever, if some little girl out there is like, wow, this is the coolest thing in the world and I could grow up to be a princess. That's great. So Hell nothing yeah. at all bad about that. Here's Pete Doctor, name spelled differently. Um, we got Soul, we got Doug Days. So Doug is from uh, Up. Up. I don't trust this. I don't at all because to me, Up this is, is one short. of the most overrated this... movies. Now, hold on, sir. Up is fantastic for 10 minutes, and the rest of it you don't even need to watch. All right. But yeah, those 10 minutes will make you they are, feel feeling. They are heart crushing. They are terrible. I tried to watch that. I've like I've been getting more and more sentimental over the years. 
to a disgusting level. <laughs> like I can, I get teary eyed watching some old episodes of the Simpsons, even like the one where Bart, uh, where Homer thinks that he's going to die from eating the bluefish or the blowfish not the bluefish. It was bluefish, <laughs> maybe whatever it was. Um, and he's like saying goodbye to the family and he passes out on the chair and whatever. Like last time I had watched that episode, I'm like, Oh God, I'm getting teary eyed. What the hell's happening here? Like, and since Caroline and I got together, I've gotten even worse with that kind of stuff where it's just like now when somebody does like, I see a commercial on TV and it's like, Oh, don't you like love your wife? And it's like, Oh God, I get it. Oh no. <laughs> like, why am I feeling this? I, a couple months ago, on a whim, was just like, I'm going to watch the beginning of Up. You couldn't do it. I fucking turned it off. I'm like, no, 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 no. Can't do it. Not watching this. I got to the part where she stumbles up the hill. Oh. And I'm like, exit, exit. No, I'm not crying tonight. Like, I kind of think I'm just like, no, 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 no. Let me turn on something fun. Like, let's watch somebody, uh, I don't know eat something and throw up or like you know something completely get out of the mix let somebody get hit in the face with pie yeah exactly let's let's turn on some a vine compilation or something like doug was an interesting enough character for a movie that i didn't like so i often use the cone of shame gif <laughs> So Disney Pixar Cars. Uh, we just went over this. Like, yeah. Cars is an iffy franchise. Win or lose? No idea. That's new, right? Luca? No idea. Looks like it'll be wave. Some like kind of ocean wave. based thing. Yeah. yeah Maybe the, Luca's a surfer and, you know, like that kind of thing. Turning red. It seems like it's a cat or a bear. I'm all right with it. Or something. Maybe it's like one of those like red bear type things. Lightyear. I mean, we can pretty much guess what that is. I know. I, so this is supposed to be. That's like uh, the Slinky, legit right? Origin of <laughs> Slinky Dog. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's the legit origin of Buzz Lightyear, the character. How great would that be if it actually was Mr. Potato Head or something? <laughs> Lightyear. You don't see it, but it says Woody's Lightyear. <laughs> right. Uh, Lightyear show. Buzz Lightyear is great. So, let's see how they do. Uh, okay, Kevin Feige. Let's see what the our Lord and Master is doing. I love Kevin Feige, man. This dude's done so much great stuff, and he seems like such a nice guy too. He's just sort of like, "Hey, I don't want to give you false hope about stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I've got a lot of great ideas, and I do great stuff, and I'm nice." It's like, <laughs> all right, you want to like become part of that. Uh, that holy group with Bob Ross and uh, <laughs> Mr. Rogers and all that, Tom Hanks. Um, so so we, we, we know. do know a lot about, yeah, we, we know about WandaVision. WandaVision seems cooler and cooler as time goes on. And I don't like quirky for the sake of quirky, but this seems like it's going to be quirky to tell a story. The more that I see this, the more I'm like, this is going to be fucking weird. And that's cool. They got a lot of like deep cut stuff that I am totally un unaware of even where I've watched like some breakdowns where people are like, see, this is a reference to this thing in this one comic or this one thing. I'm like, all right, that's what I like. You're doing your research. You're doing some stuff that even I am like, not that I'm like some big authority. I'm not like a uh, comics explained or something. Check out that guy, everybody. If you're interested, he's comics great. Comics explained is fantastic. He is amazing. Um, even more so, though, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I do not like the Doctor Strange movie as much as some of the other ones. It's one of my very lowest on the MCU. But this seems to be these two packaged together is opening up this insane world. Which they don't have it on here listed because it's not quite Marvel Studios, but we pretty much got confirmation this week. It's Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst <laughs> and Alfred Molina. Ooh, and it's so exciting. Like, it's like so exciting. Like it's so, oh my god, you don't understand. Okay, so children, I need you to just sit down for a minute <laughs> and imagine a world before these kind of movies were not only commonplace, but before they were widely accepted. And that's where you put in to Toby Maguire's Spider Man, and that is the reason Toby will always be Spider Man for me. I remember being in high school 
my freshman year and talking to one of my teachers about the Spider-Man movie and how we were like, how the hell is this going to work? Like, how are you doing to do a Spider-Man movie? And of course, I've been a Spider-Man fan since I was a kid. So I was just like, well, you know, I grew up with the animated series and like, you know, I hope that they have this character and they do this and whatever. And we were just like, yeah, but fundamentally, you just can't have it work because how are you going to film somebody swinging? And you see can that you movie imagine? and it doesn't hold up as much anymore because now you can tell that like there's that one shot where there's he's completely stationary and they're swinging and all that. <laughs> but back then it was like, holy shit, they got Spider-Man like, you know. A small thing from those movies I've always liked more that it's just coming from Peter rather than it being web cartridges and web fluid. I just feel like, all right, if you were bitten by a radioactive spider, you, yeah, you should have that. Webs. Spoiler for my Spider-Man blueprint, which if anybody's followed fanboys, they know I work on blueprints. Who knows what's going to happen with these, but my blueprint ideas are... Try to cram as much of the history of a character in with as little amount as you possibly can drag it out for. So uh, long story short, like the entire history of like Bane versus Batman takes place over like two stories. There's three Mr. Freeze stories, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, my Spider-Man thing, at least in my current draft, he has organic webs and uses a web shooter to be able to actually shoot them out. So it's I, a combination like of the both. I always thought I that really like, do enjoy that. yeah, I am. I'm so pumped for the Spider-Man thing. Now we know that uh, Charlie Cox is going to be daredevil in it. So it's like, you're getting daredevil to be the lawyer for Peter Parker. Ah, <laughs> one of the like... better uh, storylines on the animated series as well. Mm. If you, I swear, if you took the MCU and you showed it to like eight year old me, I'd probably just like explode because I would just be like, you mean to tell me that there's like a cool Captain America and <laughs> Iron Man and Thor is interesting because I never liked Thor and Thanos is in a movie and like all and just be like, what? And you're going to do all of this and you don't even have to rely on Wolverine. Like, you know what I mean? Like this stuff looks amazing. Falcon and the Winter Soldier seems awesome as all hell. It seems like they're going to tie into between that and Black Widow. It seems like they're really setting up the Thunderbolts. I have a, a an article in the back burner where I want to write up who do I want in the Thunderbolts. So spoiler, it's like Beetle would be a great replacement for Iron Man. and so on and so forth. Loki seems cooler and cooler here and there. It seems like they're going to make Enchantress basically an alt world female Loki, which I always liked the idea of. That's actually in my Thor blueprint. So, <laughs> and Loki is one of the few characters that making playing with the gender and stuff like that, I think works. Yeah. Very interested in the what if. Because that's going to be all stories of like, hey, what if uh, Peggy was Captain America? Well, Have she wouldn't be Captain America, but you know. No, I haven't uh, been able to find that elsewhere yet, and I. Um, oh my god! I haven't gonna, bothered I'm, to sign I'm up for Disney Plus. <laughs> give you my fucking Disney Plus, you lazy son of a bitch! <laughs> like, ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I might sign up for it. I might whatever, but it's it's on my list of things to watch. Then again, with WWE taking up so much time, I haven't had the time to watch a lot of things anyway. But uh, I'm I'm interested in that. What if seems like that's going to be fun. Shang-Chi was never a character I was that super into. But you know what? When has Marvel gone wrong with these? If the worst movie is Thor The Dark World and it's still got a lot of positives to it that you can bring to the table. Yeah, I'm down for Shang-Chi. I was guaranteed. Like, there's no way Guardians of the Galaxy is good. And it's one of the best. Oh, there's no way Ant Man works, and it's fun. Shang Chi. I think Guardians just... is the one where people went, "All right, fuck it, they can do anything." Pretty much, yeah. Like you got you got me to care about a tree and a raccoon. <laughs> and, uh, you can't convince me that Shang Chi's not gonna at least be good, you know? Because 
they're bringing the Amanda in back. Same thing for the Eternals. Never got into the Eternals. Don't know too much about them, but I'm down. Uh, Ms. Marvel. Here's the thing with the Ms. Marvel and Captain Marvel too. Uh, Captain Marvel and Ms. Marvel and Binary and Quasar and all that stuff. If I was a big fan of the franchise, I'm sure I'd have bigger opinions about. For the most part for me, though, Captain Marvel, when they skipped it and they were like, oh, we're going to go with Carol Danvers. I'm like, yeah, do it because we don't need the original Captain Marvel. And when you go with the Kamala Khan version, Kamala Khan, Kamala Khan, Kamala. It's, uh, I think it's Kamala. Um, it's Kamala. No, it's Kamala. The, Kamala. When they, Kamala's yeah, the, Kamala the wrestler, I think. Because it's in it, no, Kamala I, Harris. Kamala is the vice president to be. Kamala is the wrestler, and it's also Kamala Khan, but Miss Marvel. Ah, well, with her. <laughs> that, I've never read a single comic. I haven't seen her in anything, really. And I'm not so, all that interested in the idea of, like, this person can do, like, stretchy stuff and grow and whatever. It so, seems like it's not uh, for me, though, you know? But I'll watch it. There's a there's an episode of 616 that really dives deep into the importance of representation, especially amongst uh, females of color. And I get it. However, I've also explained to you that, like, the Avengers game is heavily built around Miss Marvel. And I'm like, I don't know if I like it. Just because it seems like, hey, isn't it cool? I'm a comic nerd like you. Mm. Listen, but again, at the end of the day, it's not for me. Like, you want to make something for me, make a new Spider-Man cartoon. Like, it's like My but- issue will always be anything that's representation-based, what are you bringing to the table besides that? So if people do the whole, like, well, I would like to see a female... Uh, Batman like why can't we do Batwoman we'll do a Batwoman TV show and I go yeah but what why and if they go because isn't that interesting that Batman's a girl and you go not inherently <laughs> like you know like and it's the same way other way around I don't want to see Wonder Man now I'm yeah I do want to see Wonder Man in the Marvel stories because wonder man is actually a character i don't mean it like that the simon you know i don't want to see simon um but like i don't want diana prince to turn into wonder man because to me it's wonder woman and tell me a good wonder woman story i will gladly go see a great uh i mean captain marvel i was like all right cool yeah go with uh carol danvers that makes more sense than the original captain marvel and something like she hulk I've never liked She-Hulk. Because it's just... It's just, what if the Hulk Hulk was a girl? Now, they did make the character have some different things over the years where, like, she could break the fourth wall and she's a lawyer instead of just being a scientist or something like that. But to me, I'm like, but what's the story? And I'll watch it for sure. Guaranteed. And if they do end up at somewhere along the lines here, if this is confirmation of... um, Tatiana Maslany, if she plays it, I think that she could probably play that part really well. The Ms. Marvel thing, if that's all they're bringing to the table is, well, this is a representation type thing and they don't have a good enough story, then it's going to be weak because a weak story is weak. It doesn't matter what the... I I think they'll make it work and it'll be a great show. I'm just saying that, like... It's hard for me to to not trust them. You know what I mean? that's true. Like, they've earned my trust for me to say, yeah, I'm going to watch a Ms. Marvel show. And I didn't really love Captain Marvel, the movie. Like, I think it's got a lot of flaws. And they're not as bad as people. Like, I think there are some people who just. Some people hate it because it's a female led thing. And it's. Yeah. That's stupid of them. Which is fucking like you're misogynist. Right. That is wrong. Those are the type of people that have no value to their opinion in these types of discussion. Whereas like my opinion, I'm like one of the big flaws, they spend the entire movie telling her that she's too emotional and she barely emotes. 
Yeah. Like, that's just fundamental bad storytelling. You know what I mean? Like, if that would have been a male character, I would have said the same problem. Would have been like, the, the guy's not doing anything. They're like, you're so emotional. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, but I think I... it makes it worse that it is a female character because the, right. the bit is females are emotional and yet she's not being emotional. Yeah. So I'm hoping that Captain Marvel two is a lot better. I think it's got different show, uh, not showrunners, um, different director, uh, combo or anything, but Hawkeye, I'm interested in that. They finally announced the other day that Haley Steinfeld is going to be Kate Bishop. Never read fractions comic, but I've heard good things and that seems kind of cool. Um, side note real quick about the she Hulk font why is that font everywhere the specifically that the scratch font part. yeah yeah why is that everywhere now it's like oh we need this to kind of look slightly cool and edgy here you go why is the ms marvel thing why is the s different because look at how stretchy it is oh that's I what imagine. they're going for i, I didn't, imagine didn't translate that like that for that's, me that's the best i could give you if we're talking logos too, Captain Marvel two, that's a bad logo. It's lazy. That two just mixing in and with it's that L based. Yeah. Fix the two. Put it underneath the Marvel or something at the very least. Yeah. The Hawkeye one's cool. I like it. Uh, we've seen that before. It's not like Black brand Widow's new. It's probably but... my favorite on this page. I think uh I think Hawkeye's mine. And then maybe Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We got more Marvel Studios. Let's see here. We got Moon Knight. We know um, it's uh, Oscar Isaac, I think, right? It's Moon Knight? Not sure. Moon Knight's character I'm not super duper familiar with, but I'm like, they're going to do great. Secret Invasion. Okay. Okay. Huh. Wow. Okay. Shit. That changes some of my theories about the future of the MCU. So, anybody who doesn't know, Secret Evasion revolves around the scrolls. And we've seen the scrolls, and for some reason they're good. I don't understand that at all. So maybe they turn them bad in this, but the whole point of Secret Invasion is basically about like these characters turn out to have been scrolls the whole time. I don't know who they can make a scroll. They can't do it with Nick Fury for real. They can't just be like, oh, Iron Man was a scroll. No. So it's got to be like. They got to take at least one character that's noteworthy enough. It can't just be like Sitwell was a scroll. That's tough. I'm trying to look for like what they're saying, because some of these are further explained. I'm not seeing anything on Secret Invasion, though. Well, we'll definitely be backtracking. Ironheart, um, again, I am not into the whole just what if Iron Man was a teenage girl. Um, whatever. I'll watch it. Armor Wars. Huh. Don't the ones know what that's that... exciting me most right now are the Disney Plus originals. Because I think they're going to get more time and effort. So flat out speculating here, Armor Wars. What if that's War Machine? I'm all for it. That might be kind of cool. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. That could be fun. I don't think you can miss. I am Groot. Are they going to do a whole show where he just says, I am Groot? I look, that would be I fantastic. They do that, and then they do the R2-D2 thing, and people are like, best series. Great Hold dialogue. Uh, courtesy of Collider, Armor Wars features the return of Don Cheadle as War, War Machine. Machine. There you go. Look at that. Thor, Love, and Thunder. We already know quite a bit about that. Blade. Uh, Blade's not been my favorite thing. I don't know I like why they're Blade. really skipping to do that already, but uh, whatever. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. That That's seems the... a little triggering. Huh. I'll put a pin in this. Uh, Black Panther 2 and Fantastic Four. So Fantastic Four... <sighs> Fantastic Four is one of those things that I feel they are going to crack the code on. 
They have to. They've had three bad series before. But in fairness to them... Fourth time's the charm on Fantastic Four, right? <laughs> oh, well, cor- first of all, correct. But in fairness to them, this is that was all pre-MCU, wasn't it? Right. Well, no. The third one wasn't? Third one was while the MCU okay. was still going on. But th- it wasn't part of the MCU. It wasn't part of it. No, it, was, it wasn't fucking anything. That's what it was. It was a couple people trying to force the, a movie at the last second to try to keep the rights and... Simon Kinberg and some other people being like, I don't know. How about we do like this scene? Oh, does it have anything to do with the plot? I don't know. Just do it. Like that kind of crap. Terrible movie. One of the worst comic book movies ever made. You ever see the 94, uh, never released one, but yeah, it, honestly, that one's pretty much a better constricted movie than a constructed movie than, uh, the most recent one, the fan four stick. Black Panther 2, I have to say, I I did hear that there was a thing today where they said that they are not recasting the role. And Not recasting what role? T'Challa. How can you not recast T'Challa? Somehow they are going to move on in a different way, and I feel like it's a mistake. I know that it sucks horribly that Chadwick Boseman passed away. But I cannot imagine that they're going to be able to pull off getting rid of the T'Challa character and not making it feel like it's too soon. And if they move Shuri into the Black Panther side of things, it's not going to work the same because it's just not the same dynamic. She was playing the Q of like the James Bond series, essentially. She's a supporting character. And it's like we've seen it a hundred times when you take a character that's the character and you p- take the sidekick and you put them in the character thing, it doesn't work the same. I... If they just make this a legacy thing where it's like, we're going to make up a brand new character and the guy is going to basically be the same as T'Challa, but we we want to give it a different name. I don't think that's going to work either. Like I'm just, hesitant just to trust this. The role. I really think that they should. And Okay, so it's not like they haven't made mistakes before. So it's I trust them in a lot of ways, but they have made mistakes. Look at what they did with the fake Mandarin, you know. So we talked earlier about it being a religious experience for people of that culture, and I get the hesitation behind it, you know. But like, it's still a movie. Yeah. At the end of the day, recast the role. That that's my take on it. Now, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. For the we knew we were gonna get a, th- a third Ant Man, and I was always wondering what the hell are they gonna call it? Because if you go Ant Man and the Wasp, it'd be weird to be like Ant Man and the Wasp and the whatever. And I actually did think for a little bit of time that they were gonna call it Ant Men and the Wasps. And it was going to be the two Ant-Man characters and the two Wasp characters. And I was like, that that's a way for them to get around it. You know, Ant-Men. It's really and, cheeky, Tony. Right. Or like Ant-Mans and the Wasps, <laughs> you know? What's wrong with you? Or, you know, the Ant Colony or like some kind of thing. I was like, I, I don't like know that. what you can go okay. with. Out of the ones that you have suggested, I like that. <laughs> but I don't know where they're going to go with here. We know that they're going to explore the, the quantum realm. Uh, I heard this pitch from somebody, it might've been Nando V movies that I really loved, which was you get black ant in the movie, Eric O'Grady character. And he's a thief and he used to be a, a member of the shield side of things. And that you would make a movie where it's about kind of like another, like an evil ant man essentially, but not in the same way as yellow jacket. I don't know how they'd really necessarily pull this off. I know that there's rumors that Modoc might be the main villain, which is insane to me that they can eventually do Modoc in a movie. I don't I know how they Modoc. pull off Modoc. Can I be like real? I hate Modoc. It's Modoc just a is disturbing. Yeah, looking it's fucking thing to me. I hate it. I love and I hate Modoc because Modoc being a character of like this weird creature that's the head of AIM and it's a really good like. You can use Modoc to be like a driving force for things. It's great. But what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how they're going to do it, but 
Quantum Mania. I don't like it. It's like I said, it's kind of triggering for me. Quantum Mania. Yeah. I don't like the word mania. Mania has one meaning to me now. <laughs> Maybe Vince McMahon's going to be the one. Uh, Welcome to Quantum Mania 3. Like, I gotta... All right. Now we're going to do that thing where he goes inside the guy's ass and expands. <laughs> yeah. We got a little slide here. Bob Iger. Uh, Disney Plus. Christine McCarthy. Et cetera, et cetera. Total paid subscribers. Hot star. Whatever. Paid subscriber outlook. We had a little uh, glitch to hear with our um, recording, but we're picking back up where we left off. We were looking at, I scrolled through a little bit. Um, they are bumping up their price for Disney Plus a little bit. Uh, yeah. Not I'm too not, much. You know. I'm not offended by it. I I never like when they bump up the price for things, obviously, but at least it's not some egregious, you know, hack uh not hack, uh, hike <laughs> up like some crazy amount. Interesting about their paid subscriber outlook. Last year, uh, April 2019, they were like, hey, maybe by 2024 we'll have 90 million. Now they're like, yeah, well, we're shooting for 260 million. <laughs> big, big shoot up there. Um, Continental Europe, uh, content expense outlook. All right, that's this is more of that kind of crap that we – are not going to dive into because that's we're not, just whatever. We're not statistic people. No. Nah. I feel like this would be right up Callum's alley. Yeah, if he did uh, all the research and everything. So I I want to go through some of these other things that break down some of the stuff more in detail. I've looked at a couple things during our little uh, break where we were trying to get our recording stuff back up and more running. Um, some of the stuff just seemed like it was very basic, like just sort of announcing, hey, like we're – doing this we're doing that um looking at an alien thing right now it says that noah hawley is working on it um doesn't have a lot of have a whole lot of information going on but it says build as the first alien story set on earth so i don't know how they're gonna do that necessarily but that's the thing uh this obi-wan thing it says Hayden Christensen returns as Darth Vader. Hmm. How are they going to have Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader interact with Obi-Wan without ruining the idea that they hadn't seen each other? Maybe they don't have to see each other. I guess they could do flashbacks. Yeah, and then they really don't have to come in contact with one another. It does say, though, confirmed to be set 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. So, huh. Well, I mean, technically, they don't have to see each other. You could have something where it's like Vader is on the hunt for Obi-Wan and you've got scenes of Vader and you've got scenes of Obi-Wan and they don't interact. Right. That's kind of cool, though. I Hayden Christensen, he's not the absolute best actor in the world, but he's not a bad actor. I've seen him in some things where he's not bad, but he's got shit dialogue he's working with in those movies. So I don't blame him for that. And if he's working with somebody who could end up potentially doing a better job here, I hope we get to see what he can really bring to Darth Vader. Now I you think... you gotta have the voice, so you gotta have James Earl Jones. So if they're uh, if they haven't announced that yet, then they need to get on that. Does it necessarily need to be announced? Kinda, just to be confirmed, just so I don't have to worry. You know what I mean? <laughs> At some point, James Earl Jones will pass. It's a shame. That's cause something. That's... Nothing's ever gonna sound like him. Though to be fair, the last movie that he did. The voice for he didn't sound like himself either. Well, Lion King, yeah. So, and uh, Rogue One, he didn't quite sound as much like Darth Vader then. You could tell something was off, but still iconic. Dude's awesome. Let's see some information about some of these other ones here. We got um, Rogue Squadron movie coming from Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins. So she's helming that. Okay. 
I think Wonder Woman is overrated. I have read the script for Wonder Woman 84, and I think it's garbage. Um, it comes out on Christmas. We only have two weeks. I'm going to see it, of course, and I'll figure out if it ends up being the right script or not. If that's the do script. Do you have HBO Max, or do you have somebody's HBO Max? I might sign up for it just to give it a try or something. They'll give you a free something. Uh, so I don't know about Patty Jenkins. I don't remember what else Patty Jenkins has done. Let me Google her real quick. Um, cause I think I've seen something of hers that I, I liked quite a bit or something. I forget what it might've been, but somewhere along the line, I remember thinking like, Oh, Patty Jenkins doing a wonder woman thing. This should be kind of interesting or whatever. And of course now Firefox is completely frozen for me. Uh, so let's see <laughs> here. Uh, she is yep, still frozen for me. Um, filmography she, monster and arrested development and uh, she maybe directed a couple episodes of entourage i've actually never seen any of her stuff then so why did i think that she would be a specifically good idea i don't know huh, weird um maybe i'm just remembering things wrong but some stuff i liked in wonder woman i just thought that the story wasn't all that fantastic so we know that that's gonna take place I mean, we don't know. No information right now that I'm seeing about where that takes. No, I mean, like what uh, time frame that is in. I don't see anything about that. So Star Wars Visions, an original series of animated short films, celebrates the Star Wars galaxy through the lens of the world's best Japanese anime creators. No real information going on there. I know you're not an anime guy, but I think Star Wars will do good in that style. Definitely depends on the story. Um, yeah, I don't like anime. Uh, not my thing at all. I don't like the style. I know some people, it's their number one favorite thing in the world. I think the people like the the background moving really fast and their eyes turn into white nothingness and then they fall down and they go, ah, oh! like I, I don't like that kind of stuff in the slightest bit. So if that's like that, then I'm not a fan. And if it's very like this person's going to run through a field in the middle of the night because they're sad and the song in the background okay. is very, you know, <laughs> I don't think they're going to get too tropey with. The yeah. Anime. If that's that kind of crap, I'm going to hate it. Just, I don't even know what the story will be. I'll just hate it just because the presentation, but I, I'm okay with like, show me a trailer. You know what I mean? Like you can win me over on anything. If you win me over on it, the galaxy's favorite scoundrel, Lando Calrissian will return. Doesn't say if Donald Donald Glover is going to do it. Uh, He has to, he kind of has to. I mean, he's like, he's Lando now. Like, you know, not that we're trying to force you into anything there, uh, Glover, but you're great. And, You'd make it great. I mean, you could do both. You could have Billy D doing the whole, like, let me tell you this story about this one time. <laughs> and then it goes back to, to that. Uh, Leslie Headland brings a new Star Wars series to Disney Plus with The Acolyte. The Acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. Huh. Okay. So is this going to set up how they did all that stupid bullshit nonsense with the sequels about like, there's the Exegol and there's hundreds of Sith and I guess. Well, you know, keep an open mind. Maybe. Lucasfilm Animation is doing this whole thing with the droid story. Epic story will introduce us to a new hero guided by R2-D2 and C-3PO. So it is the, the typical droids. I don't know who the new hero is, but whatever. The Bad Batch. I think, listen, I think anything on R2 and 3PO is going to instantly be good. Bad Batch looks like it's one of those animated types of things. It's because it's based on the Clone Wars. According to the official blurb, the show will fo- follow the elite and experimental clones of the Bad Batch, first introduced in the Clone Wars. They find their way in a rapidly changing galaxy. Okay. Is that the um Rex at all? Not sure. 
Because I know that some of those characters. I haven't seen all the episodes of the Clone Wars. Probably seen about like a fourth of them. It's one of the better modern Star Wars, though. I was overall pretty disappointed in a lot of Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, Rebels. I like a lot of the characters in some ways, though. Like, I liked uh, Hera a lot. And I liked Sabine. Didn't really love Ezra. I uh, Ezra somebody, Miller, as I called I him earlier. I was watching, <laughs> but somebody was uh, hypo- hypothesizing. That's not a word, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, hypothesizing that Ezra might be one of the characters introduced in the Mandalorian. I think that'd be pretty cool. At this point, have him like the spoilers. He ends up like skipping through time. Have him skip all the way through until after Rise of Skywalker and have him be one of the characters going forward, you know? I allow it. Just like ignore Ray a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um Jeez, well, not, not like ignore you know not ignore her, make her actually like become a character. Um so I'm on comicbookmovie.com. Right now, I'm looking at this post. This is not something that they've put on that type of thing that we didn't go through before. But this says, uh, Lucasfilm is in pre-production on the next installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. James Mangold is going to do it. He did Ford versus Ferrari. He did Logan. Was Ford versus Ferrari good? It is exactly the type of movie that almost everybody's dad would love. Like it's it's a good movie. I liked it a lot more than I thought that I would because I'm not into cars. But it's very testosterone. But it's not even testosterone. It's very dad movie. Like it's the story of a thing that happened with like a, a race. Like you know what I mean? And I am not interested in the slightest bit in NASCAR. I do not like the whole um Oh, look at this car. Isn't that a beauty? I'm like, no, I can't even tell cars apart. I'm not a car guy. But it was a good movie. I'd recommend it for like one of those random days where you don't have any idea what you want to watch. And you're just kind of like, oh, let me watch like an Oscar bait type of movie. That's what it is. Fair. So this is going to be where they conclude the iconic character's story. So they're going to finish off Indy. How do you feel about the Indiana Jones films? Loves. I'm sure Harrison Ford absolutely loves that. I like Indy. I feel like you can't really go wrong. It's one of those old school blockbuster movies for me. That's like, it's more about the movie theater experience and just like, oh, you got to see this than it is about the modern. Like, okay, we're going to tell you this really intricate story and that's fine. I actually think that that's missing for movies a little bit today. Yeah, the uh, the Indiana Jones films are good. They're not the most amazing things in the world to me. What, was it, what did Ford just say? He was like, I'd rather see the character just absolutely die before seeing... Uh, oh, fuck. What's his name? Chris. Guardians of the Galaxy. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt take over the role. I mean, it's not like he's the only person that's ever played Indiana Jones, too. They had the young Indiana Jones. Yeah, but it's... Uh, I don't know. I think he likes to see characters die. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see about, a little bit about this more uh, this light year thing. It says, The definitive story of the original Buzz Lightyear. I'm huh. interested. It's not so much about the toy itself. Instead, it will focus on the space pilot that inspired the Buzz Lightyear action figure. Huh. See, but here's the thing. Oh, wow, I got it in. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to do that, and if it works, can we get like a really good old school Western about Woody? So that's why Tim Allen isn't doing it. It's Chris Evans. And 
it's the human Buzz Lightyear that they base a toy thing. You know, that's kind of a neat idea. Huh. I hope it works. I'll definitely be checking that out. I mean, I've watched all the Toy Story things before, so. If um, it misses, listen, if it misses, we'll write it off. And if it misses, they tried. You know, it's not just, hey, let's do a Buzz Lightyear story and that's it. You know, um, I cannot click on some of these things right now because the audio would go through and I would get demonetized. So I'm not going to click on, for instance, the trailer for uh, Loki. I'll I'll check that out in a little bit. Um, I'll probably like pause our stream and do something or whatever. Um, Brie Larson's returning, Ms. Marvel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they are confirming Christian Bale is in Thor and Love, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, and they've confirmed that he is Gore the God Butcher. Okay, I like it. I think he's he's really good, and to a certain extent, I can't say I'll always see him as Batman because I'll always see him as Patrick Bateman, but I like him a lot. When he commits to something, he really commits to it. He is great. Yes. Now, they did elements of Gore, the God Butcher, already for Hela, so I'm curious where they're going to take that direction. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. They are confirming Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror. So, they haven't ever confirmed at this point, as far as I'm aware, that Kang the Conqueror is going to continue to be Reed Richards's descendant. But if they are, then that means that maybe they're going to go for like a black cast in some fashion for Fantastic Four. Hmm. They could write off Kang the Conqueror as a descendant of Tony Stark. And if they do that, then they got to kind of allude to that in some fashion. But I don't know about that. Um, Catherine Newton joins the cast as Cassie Lang. Who is Catherine Newton? Because that's obviously not the little girl from before because Cassie has aged up. Is she not the one that was in... Um... Huh. They might have recast uh, from the other movie uh, and from Endgame. Yeah, they did. Curious why. Ah. That's strange. I wonder why I they didn't just go with the girl from Endgame. So, Catherine Newton was in Pokemon, Detective Pikachu. Oh, she's that girl. Uh, I didn't really love that girl. She's Big Little Life. Is she John Cena's daughter? No, but she's uh, she's in Blockers. Didn't see it. Uh, one of the funnier ones that John's done. Uh, what else has she been in? Uh, Supernatural, Lady Bird, you're... You ever see Lady Bird? <laughs> I watched the first two and a half minutes of Lady Bird. And, and I was like, fuck it. this movie. Not in the. <laughs> Fair enough. Once I got to the part where she jumps out of the car and it's like, oh, isn't she so quirky and like just hates life? And I was just like, God damn it. I'm going to hate it. I feel about Lady Bird. She didn't watch it. <laughs> Emma Furman was the actress that played character the last time around i wonder why they recast her that's that's strange i can't seem to find any information about that maybe they thought that this person looked the part more or... i don't know that little girl that originally played cassie in the first two movies though she's adorable so i hope that she continues to be an actress and everything yeah and if not you know maybe it's for the better but hey wouldn't hurt well, I mean, for uh, child actors and actresses, sometimes it is better if they totally aren't. Yeah. Uh, let's see what Secret Invasion and all this stuff. Any information about this? Um, Samuel L. Jackson is back as Nick Fury and Ben Mendelsohn from Captain Marvel returns as Scroll Talos. So they're doing Secret Invasion. Yep. Um, Should be good. 
Don Cheadle returns as War Machine. A classic Marvel story about Tony Stark's worst fear coming to true. What if the tech falls into the wrong hands? Oh, man. They have a lot of characters that they never tapped into with the Iron Man series that they, like... Because a lot of them are just very similar. So I'm a big fan of them changing Justin Hammer and Obadiah staying around to where instead of Justin Hammer being the young guy or being the old guy and Stain being younger, I like it better the way that they did it in the MCU. But they still have Crimson Dynamo. They still have Titanium Man. So I'm assuming that they get into that. It's kind of neat. I'm assuming that, that the like I said, the original series, I will probably prefer them to you know, the big theater releases. Dominique Thorne is genius inventor, Riri Williams for iron heart. So they are, I mean, iron hearts, iron heart. It's not like that. We're going to really do anything super different. Who's Dominique Thorne. Let's see if I know her from anything. She does not look familiar. She's in the Beale street movie that I didn't see. Okay. It's Bill Streak of Talk and Judas yeah. and the Black Messiah. I have not seen either. <laughs> and once you look at that, Tatiana Maslany will portray Jennifer Walters. You know what? I'm sick and tired of people doing. If somebody finds out the information and it leaks, just admit it. Like, yeah. I hate this shit when people do the, no, I don't know what's coming on around that. I've never heard about this. It's not true. It's not true. Ah, it's true. Come on. Like, Maslani said, I don't know what's going on with the She-Hulk thing. I, you know, that's the first that I've heard about that or whatever. And Maybe now look at that. Maybe, you know, I just think it's mm -hmm. dumb. Just just say it. Just say, yeah, you know what? That's true. You're going to get the press anyway. A certain thing that, like, they have to commit to. They did it with uh, Steinfeld. They did it with Maslani. Like, any of those kind of, you know, uh, Marion Cotillard, it's like, well, the, I'm not actually playing Talia. And uh, like, it's just it's, people guess it. Just go with it. Tim Roth returns as Abomination. OK. Makes sense. Never thought like that would have been a thing. You know, James Gunn's writing and directing the holiday special for Guardians of the Galaxy. That's good. Everyone's favorite little tree, Baby Groot, will star in a series of shorts. So it's going to be Baby Groot. Makes sense. Makes sense. Let's say uh, the Loki teaser trailer. As I said before, I can't really play that without getting a copyright infringement thing. First trailer for Falcon and Winter Soldier. Can't do that either. I will do that in a bit. I will come back to that one. Check out the new trailer in the poster for WandaVision. I'll check that out in a bit. Um, what if gets a trailer? <laughs> I'll check that in a little bit. <laughs> Fantastic Four movie officially in the works. John Watts is going to direct. That's interesting. I like the idea that they're finally going to get a good movie. Mm. I'm going with the idea that it's going to be a good movie. Huh. So, I wonder why they didn't go with Peyton Reed. Because Peyton Reed really, really wanted to do that. And Watts is working on the Spider-Man movies. Well, Exciting. I guess Reed's technically still doing the Ant-Man stuff. So, huh. All right, so I'm, I'm looking at the sizzle reel for uh, Miss Marvel, trying to see if there's anything there. Um, so far, it looks like they're just showing off the character. I'm hoping we get, like, a look at who may play they they named the actress um Aman Villani yeah I don't know I'm just gonna check I know they're younger so maybe they haven't been in anything but just in case it's weird seeing people do table reads on zoom it's just, <laughs> That shit does not feel normal ever. Uh, she's done nothing. Uh, like, just brand newcomer kind of thing. So this... You want to feel old? She was born in 02. Uh, I hate that. 
Uh, I hate that so much. I mean, there's a good chance that she's younger than the Toby Spider-Man movies. So, you know. Hmm. Um, let's see here. Trying to find some more information. So they added 12 million subscribers in the past month to Disney+. Plus. In the past month? It's kind of crazy. You think that has anything to do with The Mandalorian? <laughs> Anything at all. <laughs> so what I think that we're going to do here. I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause our recording. For anybody that's listening. Okay. And we are going to watch these uh, trailers and then we'll be right back. And you won't even tell any difference because the <laughs> recording will just kind of pop right back up and you'll be like, okay, now they're doing that. Um, and we're going to kind of. Kind of do that because I don't want to get copyright infringement strikes, but I definitely want to check these out and talk about them. So we will be right back. Okay, so we watched a couple of these trailers. Some of them, honestly, not too much going on. Like the the Andor one, the Ms. Marvel one. They're just like they they really should call them more so. Just like intro kind of concept preview pitch type stuff. There's sizzle reel things, but without being much for a sizzle reel, it's mostly people going like, oh, I'm excited for this series. This is going to be great because this character is great and there's so much potential for a story. Not a whole lot of like clips or anything, but we did get full trailers for some of the other stuff. Now we got, we watched Loki, uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and What If. I would rank them. For my interest, before we saw these trailers, I mean, we did see a WandaVision trailer before. We've seen that, yeah, a different type of trailer beforehand. But going into just when they first announced them, you know, a year ago or whatever it was, I was very much Falcon and Winter Soldiers, number one. Number two is WandaVision. Number three is Loki. Number four is What If. See, I am one of those people who really likes stuff like What If. So when I heard What If, I had What If number one, Loki number two, Falcon Winter Soldier, and then WandaVision. After watching these trailers, WandaVision, the last trailers that they've put out have been very interesting and good and whatever. I think we're both in agreement here. After these trailers, we're like, shit, WandaVision looks the best out of the four. (laughs) I'm glad it's coming in January because we don't have to wait. Very excited really for that. Good. All four really of these good. feel different. Um, I wrote down a couple little notes, my thoughts on this. Loki, it's darker than I expected that it would be. I, First of all, you touched on it. I love that these all felt so unique. Loki looks like it's actually going to be probably a, a year or so from now, just because whenever they drop it, I imagine they want it to be the main thing on Disney plus. Cause it looks like it could anchor the platform for a while. This looks amazing. No, I don't know exactly what the time variance authority, I think is what it was called. TVA. Like, I don't know. I'm not, not too familiar with that from the comics and everything, but I'm, I'm down on the Loki thing. Uh, I would rank that the lowest at this point for me. I do. I'm, I'm like, a, it's hard to say like, oh, I'm down on it. And I don't want to give off the opinion that I think that it looks like it's bad by no means. But I, this didn't make me feel more excited about it. It made me feel less excited. I was like, this didn't give me much, you know? Yeah, but it's still early. Yeah. Uh, it's weird seeing Owen Wilson in that capacity. I would say my number three, if that's my number four, is actually Falcon and Winter Soldier. That wasn't not much going on there either. Nothing at all with USA Agent. Very surprised about that. Um, so you had mentioned that Falcon and Winter Soldier was the one that you were most looking forward to. Mm-hmm. That was the one I was kind of like iffy. To begin with, so I saw that it looked like it, it looks exciting. It looks like it'll be a fun, dramatic series. But overall, for me, I'd probably put it 
at number probably it was probably my number four with Loki being number three and number two being what if because what if yeah. looks fucking good now like what if is uh an animated thing we knew that from the start i'm not a big fan of the animation i'm not crazy about the self-shaded animation either but i mean we got it's gonna be guardians of the galaxy if it was t'challa uh we know we're getting peggy cap the watcher is a part of this marvel zombies is a part of this like this looks dope <laughs> you know so what are like, we calling peggy cap what is she uh Lady uh, Jack or what? what? <laughs> Maybe that, yeah. Like, I was gonna say though, probably outside of WandaVision because WandaVision's a little closer. That's the thing I'm looking forward to the most. Me too. And uh, Daydream Believer used in the uh, WandaVision thing. That's very cool. Very good. I it looks to. so weird, and I'm so down for it. it. First of all, Daydream Believer is a good song, and the way yeah. they remixed it very special i like the whole hey we're gonna make you think everything's just like a hunky-dory 1960s tv show i like the feel of this show more and more i'm starting to think maybe somebody is right with that theory that maybe the main villain's mephisto huh i wouldn't be where i'd go but I'm like, you know, it's it's creepier and creepier. And there's a whole different vibe between a lot of things. Falcon 1 feels like a buddy cop kind of scenario. Um, Loki feels like it's got this weird kind of like. Not I wouldn't say like as much of like. Um, like a thriller element to it, but it, it does to a certain extent more than I thought that it would. WandaVision's got this kind of horror-ish like vibe vibes it's like a thriller but only in the sense that like we're following the anti-hero yeah so that's that's interesting uh we didn't talk about some of these other things we talked about uh, i mean we mentioned like hey baymax is going to do something whatever but there's a little bit more information so raya and the last track or raya or whatever i don't know um it's an animated oh that's that's an animated movie it'll appear premiere on march 5th with premiere access and in theaters, so kind of like Mulan. Yeah, that's a movie, and Kanto is a movie. Iwaju, if that's pronounced correctly, is a series, as is Moana. That's a long form musical comedy series. I don't Tiana like it. Hold on. Is... Let's, let's, I, I, long form musical comedy. I don't know if we need it. And I'm assuming know. it's going to be crap. <laughs> and if, like, if you're gonna have Maui and it's not Dwayne Johnson, I'd assume that that would be a guarantee. You know, I mean, I don't know, man. I remember the old Aladdin TV show, for instance. Yep. You know, yeah. Zootopia Plus is a series. Baymax is a series. Is long. Baymax is interesting because, again, Big Hero Six has a cartoon. I don't know why they feel the need to do another one. Maybe they're canceling that cartoon. Uh, Encanto, a Colombian movie for the setting and music written by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Have you seen Hamilton? I have not, and I don't think I ever will. Really? I assume that that's the type of thing that if I watch, I'd go, why the hell does everybody like this? I can't Has imagine Caroline that I would like it. Hamilton? No, she hasn't. <laughs> She's not a musical person? It's weird. She is more than I am, but... But not Hamilton? Not really, necessarily. Like, she's gone to different musicals and whatever, and I've acted in a musical, but I'm like, I don't like musicals. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like to her, like, uh, the, oh, God, what's that thing? Hedwig, that thing? Like, she loves that and whatever. And I'm like, I none of these. I don't want any of them, you know? Although I did think that La La Land got ripped off that year. And I, I thought that, that Les Mis, the Hugh Jackman version, oh, that was fucking great. Greatest showman. Never, never want to watch it again, though. <laughs> Greatest showman, good musical. I haven't seen that one. But um, here's a couple other things I didn't see on some of the other things. Pixar Popcorn. Yeah. 
fast with the short features. Yeah. I mean, might be kind of neat. Pixar's the, got good shorts. The Doug Days thing is a series. I don't know how they can get I a whole series like out it. of that. I don't like it. I, I don't have any faith in this. The Cars thing is a series. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Win or Lose is Pixar's first original long-form animated series about a middle school softball team. Not really winning me over on that one. So I mean, more you got losing three me. Years. I trust Pixar. It's a new franchise. Let's see how they do. Luca is a movie set in Italy about a boy named Luca. <laughs> really giving us a lot to go on in that one. But that is a movie. And the Lightyear thing is a movie. Yeah. Huh. I thought that was a series. Interesting. And it's going to feature the origin story for the real Buzz Lightyear that the toy is based on. Yeah. So imagine, I guess, we're just taking a step into the TV show or the start of that franchise that would make Andy go crazy and buy the, the toy. It's uh, kind of funny, though, if it's supposed to be that that was a real character, because then that's kind of implying, like, that he, uh, this was, like, a guy that did these things, which is, like, I don't know, what if, like, Neil Armstrong <laughs> just sort of was doing this, you know? Like, that implies a whole lot of different things. Turning Red is about a 13-year-old girl going through puberty that transforms into a giant red panda. <laughs> Um, uh, probably not. Uh, uh, <laughs> look, Pixar. When they do these movies, they do them well. I'm <laughs> a red panda, though. Like, um, <laughs> it's just, uh, okay. Have you never? <laughs> have you never gotten excited and turned into a panda? Definitely not a red panda. Okay. <laughs> Does it have to be red? Uh, we joked about. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We... <laughs> We're not gonna say that on the air about some of these things. Um, I it... joked that the Welcome to Earth thing would be Will Smith, and it is. <laughs> but it's not based off Independence Day. It's it, like a National Geographic thing, so it's like ex- exploring Earth. Um, Limitless is not about the TV show or the film. It's Chris Hemsworth uh, exploring the limits of the human body. I like that. Is there a joke about how many people would ex- like to explore the limits of his body? Um, <laughs> yeah, imagine, imagine looking like him. So that Disney new bundle thing, it's going to offer ad-free Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN for nineteen ninety nine or eighteen ninety nine. You know what? I'd fucking pay it. I I really would. I'm paying thirteen for Hulu as it is. So I'd you'd the, you'd essentially get ESPN Plus. For yeah, I'd pay the five bucks and five get bucks. E- like I don't watch ESPN, but well, yeah, I, I'd probably shave off a couple of dollars. Although it says here, if customers bought those services on their own, the total cost would be five ninety eight more per month. Yeah, that's what. See, I'd shave off that um, then again if you don't check out ESPN plus how much are you saving you know so you might have to do that kind of number crunching depending on where they did go with certain things um, and of course the other thing that they had announced the other day the other the uh, spin off of Disney plus I forget, I'm forgetting the name of it now star oh, no, no it was, star. It was something oh. else uh my God, I'm blanking on it. What was it? Time for me to head over to fanboysanonymous.com. Which you should I be had that up on a Weekend Geek at some point recently. Discovery Plus, that's what it was. Oh. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You sent me that shit, and I was like, okay, I won't have a problem not getting this. Yeah, I'm not doing Discovery Plus either. Never mind. Uh, they surpassed 86 million subscribers. We talked about that. Disney Unveil Star, it's Hulu replacement for International. Okay, so the, okay. the Star thing is the replacement for Hulu. So I'm assuming that that's kind of where they're going to go in some fashion. I'm assuming eventually when the, when Hulu is switched over and they buy out Comcast, they're going to say, Hulu is no longer a thing. 
we're going with Disney Star or, or something. Or just Disney Plus. Like, fuck off. Something like that. They're going to merge these things together in some fashion. <clears throat> and then overall, they're adding 50 new Marvel, Star Wars, Disney, and Pixar series and movies. Crazy. God bless them. <laughs> you know, I mean, really... It's, Can you blame so them rare. for doing all this stuff? Like, I mean, people act like Disney is this like horrible corporation type of thing because it's got all this money, and of course, like, there's always corruption with some things, no matter where you're gonna go. But like, they got here for a reason, and I think, I think that angers people. You know that they're successful. It's not even so much that they're successful; it's that it makes sense. For them to be this big. You can't always equate it to the evil corporation and life would be so much more la dee if we just let the mom and pop businesses thrive. I love a good local pizza shop, but Domino's is Domino's for a reason. And, you know, yeah, it would all be great if all these companies existed separately, but Disney has just made Marvel that much bigger. Disney has made Star Wars bigger for better or worse. Discussion for later. But, like, they're good, and that's why they do them. They have way more hits than they have misses. And the misses that they have, they tend to get swept under the rug quite a bit. Unless you're The Last Jedi and all that. I mean, it's ratios (laughs) at some point, you know? Like, people love... Just pure Disney stuff. I'm not one of those, but I know plenty of people that are that are like, I'm, I'm let me get a one of those like in my older age, which is weird. But like yeah, you're getting even more like, into like Sleeping Beauty and all that. Yeah, like just really into like the history of Disney and Disney animation and all that stuff. I'm not, but then again, not everything appeals to everybody. So it's like, OK, well, whatever. Some people like uh, soccer. You know, I don't like that either. Some people like pizza and ranch sauce, and you're wrong. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but, like, just the Disney stuff alone, you got, you got people that are, like, militantly obsessed with that. And you got people like me who I'm just like, it's you slap a Marvel thing on it, and I'm going to be like, all right, you got me at least 75% of the way. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, I, like, I, I will look into what you're offering. Mm-hmm. I might not love it. I might think it, there's mistakes that you can make better and you know i might not even watch some of the things if i know that you're not putting the effort into it like that's why i didn't watch the gifted because i was like yeah this is not marvel this is you piggybacking off of the fact that you're using a marvel name you know but you give me kevin feige and you have him and he goes i'm working on something and i'm like here's 20 bucks (laughs) you know like just what is i don't know it doesn't matter what it is here's 20 bucks give it to me you know, oh well, it's a story about um those little rats that uh Star Lord was kicking around on the planet at the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy. I'd be like, what are those rats up to? <laughs> like, you know, it's kind of like you're gonna figure out a way to to make me go. God damn, you know the rats are a pretty good story. <laughs> How is it that after all this stuff this year? No Comic Con stuff going on. Not a big deal about a lot of things. Nothing's happening. This random investor day is the day where everything pops out. You know? Did they specifically wait for this to just go, we're boosting that stock, motherfucker? You know? I worry in the sense of like, I don't want the Comic Cons and stuff to mean less. I don't want them to go away. I know, I know they won't go away. But I, I don't want them to mean less. And this year kind of proved, oh, fuck, maybe we don't need massive conventions. Maybe we having, don't need all that shit. Having been to multiple conventions, never San Diego, but having been to New York Comic Con a few times and stuff, I don't think you need it like the way that it is. It was fun to go and to say that I went to New York Comic Con 
But even the second time around, I was like, you know what? I don't really care about a lot of this. And it's sort of... I mean, there's certain things that, like, just the way that things change, you create something, you improve on it until you don't need it anymore. Like, Movie theaters. just obsolescence ends up happening with a lot of things. Like, I mean, uh, we used to have tape players. And then it became like, well, you know what? What if we made it a disc? And then that way you can cram more information and it takes up less space and it you know, it's more reliable with like uh, the picture quality and all this kind of stuff. And then you eventually go, yeah, but can I just download it? And then you get people these days who are just like, we well, can't get rid of physical media. And it's like, but really Why? though, it's, there's not much of a benefit other than making sure you have a copy. But at the same time, if you have a copy, you could always lose the copy too. So you're kind of you're kind of losing steam there. I haven't bought a DVD or a Blu-ray. I bought only like three or four Blu-rays. I've had a Blu-ray player, and oh, I, I bought a couple Blu-ray sets. That I don't know if you would count it like that, but like all my Bond movies are all it's a Blu-ray set, and um, yeah, I've got the Phase One of the Marvel movies is a Blu-ray set, but I'm not gonna buy a DVD of Forrest Gump if I can just get the digital version of it, you know, check it out on Netflix or whatever. So some things, things like, uh, for example, I bought Batman death in the family. Why? Because in order to actually do the interactive movie stuff, it had to be on Blu-ray. Yeah. That sucks. They didn't do that. Right. You know, or, um, I, I've been buying like some compilation, DVDs for like certain wrestlers because it's like, all right, I want to have just a compilation of this stuff. And if I can't find it on digital, I'll buy the DVD, but it's gotta be like a really strong necessity. Like I can't find you anywhere else kind of necessity. And if you're a collector of things, you're going to want to get stuff too. But I don't believe in preserving physical media for the sake of preserving physical media. Yeah. And when it comes to something like a Comic Con type of thing, it starts off as a group of people getting together to like swap comics. And it eventually blows up and it becomes this big media storm and people start doing movie trailers there and they start dropping you know, this is exclusive merchandise and whatever. And then it gets to the point where it's like, you know what? Well, the internet's a thing more than it ever was. And now streaming online is a viable option because you couldn't really do that. Even like 10 years ago, it was a lot harder to do. I mean, I, I've been doing podcasts for almost 10 years and that alone was a bitch. Back then. You Remember know? when YouTube could only be 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes. That's why the first episodes of Smack Talk are broken up into less than 15-minute segments. And that's crazy that, like, nowadays you can just do that. So to me, I'm like, well, you know, I stood in line and waited and waited for, like, two hours to go to make sure that I got a, uh, a pass to be able to stand in line later to see the first episode of daredevil and it's like you know what if they would have just done that online it would have been a lot fucking easier and they didn't get anything extra out of it like you didn't have to pay for it you paid for the ticket to go to comic-con obviously but like i didn't give any money to marvel to be able to see it and so, only i could see it with a bunch of people that were there and i put up a review on fanboys and stuff but like you know what I mean? Like you couldn't get like the revenue of like a YouTube stream from that or the immediate publicity of everybody who could potentially be interested in it, checking out the trailer, you know? So it kind of comes down to this with stuff like, you know, Ray on the last dragon being released digital the same day as in theaters or Wonder Woman 1984, same thing. Pixar's Soul, same thing. 
as you look at it, do you think that we see a resurgence of this stuff? And it's just like, oh my God, we can do things again. Yeah. Or do you think at the end of the day, you know what? I kind of like the fact that I don't have to silence my cell phone in a movie theater and I can just eat, you know, chicken parm while I watch this movie. Man, that sounds good right now. <laughs> ah, sorry. But yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I think maybe movie theaters and stuff like that are passe. I think it's going to become more of a niche thing, just like a lot of other things are. I think that Comic-Con is going to be more focused on the cosplay and not much more else to be honest like because comics are dying you know like people are doing digital comics what's the purpose of a digital comic i don't know being a part of of like a you can't do like a convention with a digital comic people are going to download it so you can't swap that stuff and you take out movie trailers and panel type things because panels you could just do that on zoom and on skype and broadcast that live it's the same as the other stuff so you take them out what are you left with on those you're left with autograph signings uh buying original artwork or any kind of artwork buying anything really the merchandise and the artist alley and that kind of stuff and people walking around in cosplay that's what um, conventions are going to be. Merchandise wise, even that I would argue is probably better off on the internet. And I, the thing is, I'm okay with things mellowing out. Like, I think that these conventions were getting too big. It's funny, but like, you look at something like COVID 19 and it makes you go, oh my God. How the fuck were all of these people literally packed on top of one another and nobody was like, no, this is not good. You know, like, well, people do get sick on those all the time. There's always like you get convention sickness because there's just people are walking around and somebody's caught something, you know? Yeah, but I think like and you get the people that don't fucking shower and like that one dude that was dressed up as blade that smelled like baby shit. (laughs) This and this is the best time to go. You know what? Is it really worth it? I don't think so. And just not do it. I really think with like the stuff like this, like this is investor day. That sounds boring as shit. And look at all the stuff we got, you know, like, but it makes sense. It's, Hey, if you are an investor in this company, here's where we're going to boost our stock and we're going to get people talking about this and we're going to, we're going to let you know our plans for the next year and whatever. I'm imagining that this this year, man, this year, we're going to look back on 2020 and that's going to be the new joke about like 2020 vision. It's going to be like, holy shit, how many things changed in 2020? Movie yeah. theaters are going to die out in a lot of ways because less people are going to go to the movies just because they're going to get used to this. And the streaming platforms... Chris Nolan, for instance, is like, I fucking hate this or whatever, because he knows what's happening. They're going to use this as their test to see if this is the way to go in the future. If it bombs terribly and people just aren't making any money and the subscriber rate plateaus and you can't do anything about it, because there is a finite amount of people, you know? I think, like, for example, I don't think... Pixar's Soul and Wonder Woman 1984 in two weeks should be the definitive test of this, right? I think they should keep going and then in a year or two see where that lands them. Because I do think in the immediate, there's going to be like this, well, why don't we just go to the movie theater? You know, like, because there's that, I don't say nostalgic, but, but there's that like, I haven't been able to do this. I just want to get out of the house. Wait till yeah. things go back to normal and then see if people prefer the convenience of, nope, I'd rather just stay home. I think the real tests are going to be 
soul is going to be very much like onward. Families are going to go, you know what? It's around Christmas. Let's let's get that soul movie. Let's order that. And the kids will watch that because that'll shut them up. And Wonder Woman 1984, yeah, it makes good money in the box office normally because it's a superhero film and whatever. But it is something that does target certain things not quite the same as some other things. Like, there are people that, I mean, I'm not looking forward to the movie as much as a lot of other people are because I think that the first one's overrated. And I think that if this movie follows the suit of the script, then it's bad. Uh, there are people, though, that don't like the movie because it's Wonder Woman and they don't want to watch a, a female led movie. And there are people that specifically would watch it for that, but they're not going to pay the money for it. You know, like if they had AMC a list, they'd go, Oh, I'll check out that wonder woman movie. Cause it's still, it, it makes no sense to me, but there's still some people that are like, yeah, I've seen a couple of the MCU movies, but not all of them. I've seen Endgame and I've seen whatever. And it's like, how, like, how do you do that? How do you function? You know, but People do that. Some people just, they don't care about continuity and everything. And I would be really curious to see what the real test is of if they put Black Widow on there and then they put like, what would the next movie be out of the bunch? Like Thor, maybe? Probably Love and Thunder. If you put both of those on there and you see the comparison... Because then you go, okay, well, then we got to take out the idea of the bias of the, oh, I don't want to go see a girl movie, but those kind of people. So, but here's the issue there. I think you fall into a WWE network pattern of now the only people you have watching your shit are the people who are going to watch your shit. You're not reaching that casual audience that might say oh i like marvel kind of not really i only like the movies and then i like to buy the merchandise <laughs> you know like i'll go see thor but will you get disney plus for thor now first of mm -hmm. all i think disney has a wide enough variety of content that most people should subscribe to disney plus they don't pay me to say that but i think it's very much worth the money. Hey, Disney, if you want to pay us. <laughs> I would love to be paid to say that. But I do think if you go that route, you're going to get the diehards more than anything else. Now, granted, there's a lot of diehards. It's not like WWE where there's like maybe a million. You know, there's a lot. So you, you can do fine. I just think you are shorting yourself of that casual viewer. And the money that comes along with that too is very interesting because casual is not something you can ever really fully gauge. I mean, people, when they go to the movies before, it's been like, this is tracking for X amount of money and then it ends up doing great or worse because they never really know. But never underestimate the ability to push a casual person away with the slightest bit of effort. Like... I've gotten people that don't really love certain movies to go see certain movies with me because they wanted to get out of the house to go somewhere. And uh, you know what? Going to the movies can be fun. It doesn't matter what I'm seeing. I'm going to see a movie. Sure, I'll go watch a Bond film because it doesn't matter. I'm getting out of the house. I'm going to the movies. Sure, I'll go see that Star Wars movie even though I'm not interested because, well... Tony wants to see it, and I'll, I'll just I, I want to hang out. I want to do something. I'll you know what I mean? Tony, like get a pizza and like hang out, and watch this movie, drink then, some soda, and eat a pop uh, eat a popcorn, <laughs> eat some popcorn, yeah. and you know uh, it's two hours on. and whatever. And at, of course, we're talking at a different time frame where it was like, yeah, it's five bucks. <laughs> you know, you know. But where then now it's, you, know, you put a down payment on a house to watch a fucking movie. If but, you do that now, you're kind of going. I don't want to see the, if I have to sit at home and watch something, I'll just, you know, binge watch my favorite content creator. It's, it's very, it, it's strange because content is getting more niche anyway, right? Whether it's music, movies, you know, series, whatever it is, 
people are just starting to do what they would only be interested in, which is bad. But also, if that's the way content is going, are you better off just trying to get on board with that now? Yeah, and if people have more options available of the things that they like, then they're going to just stick with the things that they like. Like If you have 30 pizza places around you and pizza is your favorite food, you're more likely to try the different pizza places than you would be to try an Indian place. That's a factual statement that I live in my everyday life. And then when you apply that to other things, if you have like the Discovery Plus thing, if you're the type of person who watches that stuff, you're going to watch more of that because you're going to be on the Discovery Plus streaming platform. If you watch ESPN, you're going to watch more of the ESPN stuff. Disney Plus, same thing. Whereas something like a Netflix is like, hey, here's a horror movie. You're interested in that? No, nope. well, here's a comedy. Here's like... I don't go on Netflix all that often, but every so often when I go on there, I'll check out something that I didn't even know existed because it'll be like the toys that made us never knew that that show existed. Great. And then one random day on Netflix, it's like, Hey, you probably would like this. And it's, I was just like, all right, I'll check that out and watched a couple episodes. I'm like, yeah, kind of neat, but it's a different story when you ask people to buy a subscription to have a smart TV because older people don't have smart TVs. That's a huge problem, and that needs to be discussed. Now, an I older don't... person can go to the movies, but they're like, I mean, like uh, to use my grandma as an example, my grandma hasn't been to a movie in I don't know how many freaking years, probably decades. But it wouldn't have been too crazy for her a few years ago if it would have been something that she would have been interested in, whatever, to be like, oh, let's, yeah, I'll go to a movie because I just go to a movie and that's all that it is. But when you start getting into, did you download the app on your phone? It's like, well, she doesn't have a smartphone. There you go. That already takes so that out of the mix. I, I, on the TV for her, it's like she can't figure out the regular remote, you know, because it's too complicated because it's like, oh, if you hit the voice remote thing, you can whatever. No, I don't know what, what do you mean I can pause it? Like that kind of thing can't expect an older person to figure out the Disney plus type of stuff as much. Now I really do want to get into that because like even let, let's go with middle-aged people, not even somebody as old as I know that your grandmother is. Let's go with somebody who's middle-aged. If they don't understand how to open these files or open a PDF, the fact that the world is moving in that direction almost feels cruel. Like you can't phase these people out just because you're like, well, the kids are going this way. I, I just, there's a certain cruelty element to me because, you know, not everybody's going to know how to, like you said, use a smartphone or open this app on their smart TV. For, I'll give you the example. My family's one of those families that they need me to, you know, put something on Netflix for them. Yeah. I, do it, I do it from my phone upstairs while they're downstairs. And they think I'm a wizard and I'm not. Yup. <laughs> so like I, I hit a button. <laughs> yeah. It, that's one of those things that like, I don't think that that's fair. And I think that while we're talking about 2020 changing everything, I think that ultimately it might not because Maybe that wins the day because other people still need to do things. I got a feeling it's going to be like the older people still go to the theater and they still want to go see things in theaters. And the younger people are like, hey, come over to my house and we'll watch the whatever. And then suddenly you spent $20 on your subscription that month and you got $20 where a group of 10 people all hung out and made a party out of it. And you would right. have gotten $200 out of it before if that would have been a movie. What are they going to do? So big change. It into our brains. Like we don't even watch it anymore. It's just, yeah. It's like a, you press a button and you go, Hmm, that was good. Yeah. I, I understood all of that content. I enjoyed that dopamine rush. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Just hooked up to things like fucking characters and Wally or something. But like, 
that alone too i mean you got to think about like you have a a finite amount of subscribers not everybody has uh the right internet connection for these kind of things not everybody owns a tv not everybody watches everything on a streaming thing on a tv some people are like yo i got a netflix account i watch everything on my laptop and some people watch things on their phone and whatever, but not everybody has all that stuff. Some people still do have landlines and some people still do use typewriters and whatever, but they're dying out because everybody has to learn these other things. And eventually it's going to be like, all right, less and less and less and less. I don't know. It's scary. I like a lot of it, but I hate a lot of it because I do like the idea that if it's hard for somebody to go out to the movies. Like you got to figure like people in wheelchairs. It's a lot harder. Or, you know, a kid who has like, uh, the right type of like attention deficit, whatever, where it's like, uh, I, I can't get him to like sit still to watch the movie the whole time, but you can do it at home. You know, like, there's a lot of benefits to those kind of things or even elderly, uh, like retirement centers. You can't get a lot of people to go out and just be like, Hey, let's go do this kind of thing. Let's go see these movies and whatever. It's like, well, this is a horrible like picture I'm painting, but it's like, well, this one's in a wheelchair. This one's got an oxygen tank. That one can't walk out, uh, all that far without my, needing okay, a rest. Well, my argument to that, all of that immediately becomes, are we developing a very complacent, lazy, and almost to an extent victimized society where you go, like, let's take the, uh, let's take that one by one. So let's take the kid in the wheelchair where you go, oh, isn't it cool that you can, you know, just sit here and watch at home? Yes, that's easier for the kid, the family, and all involved. But then you are basically telling them they don't have to go out and yeah. learn that experience. <laughs> that is, it is kind of like, then just stay at home. Kind of like, but, you know, I like, it's, it's a real thing. And that's part of what I worry about that. It maybe, you know, as good as these things are and as easier as these things do make life, are they also developing really rotten habits? I guess you need to do something that makes it all that much worthwhile. And it might end up being more along the lines of sports because I mean, I've watched wrestling for most of my life and I've gone to maybe a dozen shows because it's more expensive, but there's not much that I can argue against the idea of if you go to a sporting event, you tend to like it better. Like, even if you don't like the sport, being yeah. in the environment is like, yeah, you just get swept up in the rush. Like, I don't love baseball. Not interested in it. I've watched plenty of baseball games. I've played plenty of baseball games. I've played pen plenty of baseball video games. Uh, you know, like I, I had a, a couple of mitts growing up. I had, a, you know, I played with kids around the block. I did whatever. I never played like sports for school but baseball's never been something i've been all that interested in yet every once in a while i'm like you yeah, know it'd be fun to go to a game let me hop on over to philly with some friends and go to a phillies game and i spend more money than i should because you get a hot dog there it's like 20 fucking bucks or whatever and i always get the sausage sandwiches at like city field i haven't lived in new york in a while but when i did like you know like you said it's it's part of the experience, and I think as I good wanted as it is, to go see a uh, New York Guardians game with the XFL. Oh my god, yeah! The fact that I didn't see a Tampa Bay Vipers game sucks. Yeah, I wanted to see that, and I have never been to a football game before, and I was like, man, that'd be fun. And it never happened, of course, because like COVID, COVID and you know, the XFL shut and down. the XFL shutting down and everything, but like. There's a certain level of just like, that's fun and I'm going to spend a little bit more money because it's going to have that experience. And I can't think that movies are going to have that justification as much because I always would rather go to the movies. 
especially if it's like a comedy, there's something so much better about being in a movie theater where Cap uh, summons Mjolnir and a whole fucking group of like a couple hundred people just go, ah, I did it. Like, you know, and like that is what's genuinely like, it's such joy when you go to a, a comedy and everybody's laughing, you know, yeah. but I'm, I'm not, not spending a hundred bucks to do it. So it's like, I'm not, we're not going to get bogged down in politics, but just to try this all together. If you look at the first things that people started to do after like the first real bad wave of the pandemic and the lock and the mandated lockdowns everywhere, it was the protests. And it was like this thing of like, yeah, let's all get together because that's still an experience that is needed. You know, you need that group kind of, I'm hanging around a bunch of other people and I'm not just stuck in my house all day. Yeah. And, or it's like, I'm not, you know, just talking to people through zoom. I'm like, we're all laughing at this thing. We're all doing this thing together. And it just feels like now it's an experience that means more than even the base thing that we all set out to do. Now it's this, this moment has grown. And I think that's something that, even though the convenience of movie theaters, you know, kind of shutting down in favor of watching things in your home is nothing beats the experience of, like you said, every laughing in the theater at once or every cheering because it's like, you know, uh, the first episode seven, when those credits hit the screen and you're like, yeah, you're like, yeah, it hasn't ruined anything yet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking awesome. But sure, you know, again, you might leave with a different feeling, but also maybe everybody else in that theater yeah. has that different feeling. And again, it's just the experience. And I think, I think that's kind of why that these things won't actually change too much right off the bat, because I don't think people are ready to give up the experience. I know that I will always want to still just go to movie theaters because yeah you said like star wars like i i only got a chance to see episode two uh, episode no i saw episode one in theaters yeah so episode one onward in theaters obviously i was never like born in 1970 something if i'm the age that i am right now but uh like i saw episode one before i was a star wars fan I had been like a very, very cursory Star Wars fan, but it wasn't something like I didn't know the characters, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi comes on the screen and I'm like, who's Obi-Wan? Like that kind of thing. So it's very, very little that I had known. But by the time episode two comes out, I know everything about the films as much as I can. I know some of the extended universe type stuff, uh, expanded universe. And by the time episode two comes out and I'm like, fuck yeah, star Wars movie. Like it just started. And episode three comes out and I'm with, you know, a couple of friends as well. And we're all like, yeah, it's the last star Wars movie, man. Like, this is crazy. When's the last time we're going to be in the theater and we're going to hear, but I mean, like, so you get that, you get the, uh, I said, I've probably told the story before, but I was so pissed that the Daniel Craig movies, we're not doing the gun barrel at the beginning. <laughs> and it's like, all right, you didn't do that with the first one. Casino Royale. I, I kind of get it, but I don't like it. And Kawana Masalis comes around and I'm like, why are you starting with credits and all this? Why are you no, 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 this isn't right. And you get to Skyfall. And I'm like, God damn it. They didn't even do it with this. They, they, they had to and whatever. And I'm sitting next to a friend of mine, Ryan, uh, when Spectre happens and beforehand, we're all gathered ahead of time because I used to like standing outside the movie theater or in the lobby or whatever. And before and after the movie talking about, you know, oh, you think what's this going to happen with this? Then uh, what do you think about this? Whatever. And uh, Ryan tells me afterward, he's like, dude, you were so giddy at uh, the beginning of the movie when the gun barrel popped up. He's like, 
that was such joy coming out of you. Like you got all like, yeah, like pumped up and whatever. Cause I was like, did it the gun barrel. Fuck. Yeah. You know, like, but people do it, you know, like, uh, any of those kind of things, like they, that group mentality make means so much more. And I don't know. I mean, like it, it's, it wouldn't do the same for me if they release no time to die. And if I'm sitting in my computer chair and I got that on my left on my second screen on my TV. And that's the other thing. It's the, like the ADD that we all now have. We all have, I'm sorry. Like I, okay. Quick backstory because older people cannot work technology. I've been helping my mom with uh, some job orientation stuff. I did that while working. And right. I was listening to her things and my things. And she's like, how, how are you functioning? I'm like, cause I do this all the time. Right. And it's so, so unhealthy. It's but exhausting was, too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But I was just like, that's how I function at this point. I'm always doing more than one thing. And yeah, you won't give it the same attention because as much as it's comfortable to sit in your house with the, maybe you want to play a chicken parm with some garlic knots while watching the movie. Uh, <laughs> killing me. You know, maybe you'll pay more attention if you just pay for your popcorn, silence your phone, and mm-hmm. just watch the fucking movie. You sit down, you shut up, you look at the screen, and yeah. then you're not getting the buzz from your phone that you can just actually check and check. text somebody real quick and go, oh, wait, wait, I missed that scene. Let's go back and do whatever. And You, you don't have that luxury, and... I don't know. It's maybe you and I see it differently because we're like at this perfect age where we can understand both sides, and we're also just those kinds of people. But I can't see movie theaters dying completely. Yeah, because it's. I've had plenty of times where it's been like I've gotten people to come over and we've all watched a movie, or we've done like marathons at Daces or something. And it's just not the same, like, and it never will be. Like, you can't get the right popcorn. It's not going to taste the same. And you can't get people to stop checking their phones because they're just like, well, we're just like hanging around at the house. Who fucking cares? And you, somebody rings the doorbell, you're going to go check it out. You know, like, you're, oh, I got to let the dog out real quick. Let's pause it and whatever. And you don't have the big screen. You don't have the it's not as dark. It's not, the sound isn't as booming. I'm not interested in saying the avatar movies that are coming out. I don't think that that movie was particularly amazing as it was, let alone to see three more, four more, eight more, whatever the hell you guys planned. But I really am not interested in watching them on my computer, you know? Right. So I just got this feeling that like this investor day type of thing is like in the future comic con is going to be a bunch of people dressed up as characters that they want to dress up as so that they can get autograph signing meet and greet type of stuff and buy merchandise. Everything else you'll buy the comics online and you'll watch the live streams of the things online and that'll be those elements are gone so then no nowhere near as many people go so you don't have the big convention halls to do that they end up being smaller because they just can't afford the big uh, convention halls and then the movie theaters they go well you know we want to give people the option of doing this so for a premium price we can put it up on your streaming thing at the same time and if you really want the theater experience, you can go, but we're going to have a limited window because movies make most of their money in the first couple weeks. So once you get past the point where a movie is like, I don't know, fourth week in, if you wanted to see the movie, you're seeing it already, you know? Right. So maybe they only last a month and then they're already on the streaming platform. So you want to watch it again, you watch it there. You know, it's and by the way, for whomever 
wanted more podcasts where we <laughs> shoot the shit. You're getting it. We're at a two thirty four right now. <laughs> yeah, and I mean we've talked about a variety of things, but it it really is just one of those. Like, I've kind of said, you know, I don't want WrestleMania weekend to be a hundred events where a bunch of people are crammed in on top of one another, not only because of COVID, but just because, like, maybe that's a little much. But I also would never want to see the Thunderdome become the permanent replacement for live audiences. And for that matter, I wouldn't want to see live events in general go away. I think like that's a huge part of the experience. The fact that people so openly talk about live events in wrestling going away, it's kind of scary to me, you know? A lot of this is scary. Yeah. It's like some of these changes are absolutely necessary. But a lot of them would just be the phasing out of so many traditions. Yeah, entire institutions. Yeah. I mean, even like this is a, an odd topic to get into one way. I mean, we start this podcast essentially being like, yeah, let's check out what they had about Loki and like that kind of thing. But even something as simple as dating. Yep. Dinner and a movie. It's the most basic a date that you can do and it's one of the best ones in my mind like you can screw it up of course you can screw up any kind of a date but like dinner in a movie is something that's so universal and, and now dinner in a movie no it, granted don't get me wrong restaurants aren't dead it's like you can obviously still go to a fancy restaurant and take somebody to a movie but you can also just go hey well let's just meet up here and we'll Uber eats this and go through Netflix. And like, that's literally become a thing, Netflix and chill because it was, Hey, let's just put on Netflix and Oh, look at that. We're fucking, you know, like, <laughs> now that does work better for that <laughs> where it's like, if you know that that's your goal and that's where you're heading, then that gives you an excuse to go over to somebody else's house and you can just go, Oh, let's, let's pretend that we're going to watch this thing. And then, oh, like, you know, that kind but of thing. But I also think it, it's... It it's can't casually developed. date. Yeah, but it's also developed on the other side this weird expectation of, like, people no longer just meet and interact. Now it's, like, this full-on, who are you? What are you about? You know, like, I'm going to make a decision within 30 seconds as to whether or not we are compatible people because <laughs> we are just machines now. You know, uh, let me click on your profile thing and see how much we match according to the algorithm. Yeah. And we are all controlled by algorithms and it's fucking insane. The way, like I see here in your profile that you don't like hiking. I don't think, <laughs> 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 but oh, they, I'm like, adventurous. it doesn't seem that you are. Sorry. It's like, yeah, and it's just that's that's weird and again, missing out on experiences and this is taking a weird detour from Disney Investor Day, but it's like it, it all does tie together. Because at one point Disney meant, hey, let's go to the movie theater and see the Mickey cartoon before the feature. Yeah. You know? And like the feature of the picture shows, you know. It all it all changes. Did you go check out the talkie? <laughs> you know, like, I don't think that like the theme parks will ever really go away. No. Because I think that that's just going to be everybody at, at like you get adrenaline junkies and you get people that just want to go for like a vacation and they want to do that kind of stuff. And yeah, they're in a shit time right now because people can't do that, but they'll bounce back. Like, eventually, when people get to the chance that they can do that, people are going to flock to that stuff. And And I kind of. That's the kind of hope I'm holding out for movie theaters. Me too, to a certain extent. Like, I know that I'm going to be, if there's a, a point where it's sort of like, all right, you don't have to worry anymore. I'm going to worry a little bit longer anyway, just because, you know. Yeah, because they, you know it's coming. Yeah. They have, like They have implanted at this point that this is the 
future and i mean just in general about like the virus like it's different oh. than a scenario where it's like oh, okay it's not like the thunderstorm is over so now we can you know go and uh, play mini golf like you know this is the type of thing where it could be like, well, you don't have to worry about catching a virus anymore. Then you wait another week and people go, actually, it spiked up and whatever. Like, I'm not at that point, way not at that point right now of being like, OK, I think that I'm going to just start acting like everything's normal. And I don't know when I'm going to be. But once it does get to the point where it's just like, all right, slowly but surely, everything just comes back to normal. And it will. Like, at some point, it just has to. It, it, we can't just be like 30 years from now being like, you ever still wear masks and we're whatever. Like, we got to figure this shit out. And I mean, when that slowly converts back to normal, even if it's a crappier movie, I'm going to be more inclined to want to go to the theaters just to be like, I haven't seen a movie in theaters for ages. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of this is going to come down to. Because, again, not trying to talk about the virus, but I I personally feel like we're in a position right now where we're trying almost desperately to pivot. Like, everything's going to just be okay magically now. And I think that part of that is just going to see a bunch of people flock to theme parks and flock to movie theaters and even if it's a shitty movie because again i don't care i just want to see a movie even if it's you know zoolander 2 (laughs) i'm gonna watch a movie yeah because i have done that in the past without this being the case where it's just like man i haven't gone to the movies in a while you want to go see something what's what's playing i don't know let's uh i don't know let's watch that little thing like uh, the first movie that Caroline and I went to go see was Logan Lucky. That was not a movie that was on my list, you know, but it was Logan like, Lucky. I was like, like, uh, how about we go to the movies? You want to go to the movies? And we're like, yeah, let's figure out what we're going to see. I don't know. Uh, this is playing. That's playing. Or that's playing. Uh, I don't know. How about we see that one? That seems like that's a thing. And it was she and I, and one other person and the fucking guy sat right next to her. <laughs> I don't know why, but god damn it. Um, so that was just for the sake of seeing something. And, you know, if this is a couple months from now or a year from now or whatever, I might be like, wow, you know what? I haven't gone to a movie in a while. Sure, I'll go see uh, that generic everybody gets together at the end and it's a happy story and the guy gets the girl and it's called like the, the Meadowlands ranch or whatever. And just be like, all right, it's fucking hit me with the sap. I don't care. Like, you know, know, oddly enough, I don't think there's enough of this because I think like people are in this phase where they're obsessed with quote unquote, realistic endings. So I don't think there's like enough of those. And Hey, things ended up okay because Sometimes that is also a genuine possibility. Uh, you just don't have uh, anybody that's watching Hallmark and Lifetime stuff then, I think. Because well, that's yeah. all like, the blueberry farms. And, like, you well, know. listen, uh, Lifetime is doing a Colonel Sanders movie. What? You heard see this? Go Why ahead was this Google. not a part of uh, Disney Plus? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and Google a recipe for seduction. No, that can't. No, <laughs> go ahead. A recipe for seduction KFC. <laughs> Lifetime confirmed to NBC News on Monday that the project is real and that a recipe for seduction is the channel's first custom branded content. They, they, Mario this, Lopez. This is, is real. When we wrap up, you're going to watch the trailer and I'm going to laugh as you go through this trailer. But but going back to what you were saying, you know, yeah, that's actually how I saw Rogue One. It was just, hey, I'm going to see this. So-and-so doesn't want to go with me. You want to go? Sure. <laughs> and, I, and that's how I saw Rogue One. Yeah, I mean, that's how I even had seen Transformers because 
even though I liked Transformers as a kid, it was never the biggest thing in the world. And it was like, yeah, you want to go see that Transformer movie? Uh, all right, I'll get out of the house. It, it was literally that. It was literally, I'll get out of the house. And I don't know if Rogue One was just playing in my house, if I would have stopped everything I was doing to just sit down with people and watch it. Yeah, I don't think that I would with a lot of things. And I don't know. I guess we'll see. They're doing very well on their projections. So that's something that's positive but who knows what 2021 is going to bring but we talked earlier in this year about our expectations and how things didn't play out the way that uh you know it didn't we were saying there who knows what we're saying here how that's going to play out um if you have listened this long in the podcast we thank you like very much so yeah like this turned into a lot of different things but <laughs> it's enjoyable Pop I'm culture. here. At, <laughs> do you hear that? What? Okay, some I don't know. Some noise from uh, uh, outside my house. It sounded full blown, like kaiju. <laughs> like that freaked me out. All I hear is. <laughs> I have no fucking idea what that was. <laughs> Amazing. So if, uh, if by the time this podcast comes out, if you find out that fucking Cloverfield got me, then <laughs> you know what it is. Well, you Maybe it's uh, the Disney machine coming at us because we're not fully selling all the things. I don't know. But um, yeah, lots of things we discussed here. Who knows where all this is going, but this is, uh, this is interesting. And yeah, if you listen to this all the way through, and you just go, man, I want to hear these guys talk more about this stuff. Follow us. Uh, share this. Like it. Subscribe. Donate to the Patreon. Show your support in any way that you can. Tell your friends about Fanboys Anonymous. Check out the articles. Whatever it is, the more support that Fanboys Anonymous gets, the more time that I can dedicate to doing these kind of things. And the more fun I'll have with these things, because I really like doing that. And at this point, I hope we do one in six months talking about the current state of movie theaters. I, I hope that we have a, a six-month thing from now where we go, man, remember how awful that was and how much better it's gotten? <laughs> I have to imagine that that's going to be the case. I want six months from now for us to be in May and going, oh, isn't this great that like racism was solved and like... <laughs> Yeah, they found that cure for everything where everybody just takes a pill and you can live forever unless you're a bad person and the bad Listen, people just dissipate. And it, it like that is it's like the magic much, sorting hat, you know, like <laughs> that is very much the magic of Batman 66. It's very much. <laughs> hey, I took my anti everything pill. Ha ha. Penguin. <laughs> like, my bat covid repellent. <laughs> That's that's literally what it would be. He'd be like, <laughs> because you know, it's the from the bat, you know. I mean, why not? <laughs> you know, you know, Robin. The COVID nineteen would be very deadly. It's very lucky that I had us take our anti coronavirus pills. <laughs> yeah. You should stay in school and don't smoke. Holy vaccines, bat! Uh, vaccines, bat! <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And we thank the scientists, but more importantly, <laughs> we thank America. <laughs> We thank the scientists and we thank the guinea pigs that they tested all these products on. And <laughs> because those are the true American the true. heroes. Yeah. Gosh, you're right, Batman. <laughs> uh, all anyway. <laughs> Anything on your blog? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm on news for Fightful.com. I'm on news for WrestleZone.com. I just did an Among Us stream on Fightful earlier tonight, so check that out over at Fightful's YouTube channel. Check out the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast with myself and Callum Wiggins on this upcoming channel this Saturday. Uh, we review the show before Armageddon 2002. Lots of discussion about sexism once again and the treatment of Stephanie McMahon once again. Very interesting stuff. And I'll be back here with Tony for the hot tags. Tell yeah, so hot tags. check out those uh, stuff if you're interested in the pro wrestling side of things. All oh, on right. the smart <laughs> <laughs> so used to smart out moment though. Uh, that's all on smartoutmoment.com. So check that stuff out and all the articles and everything that we have going on here. I don't know what's happening next for fanboys, but 
maybe a tenant review, maybe God, God, I hope. something about Christmas movies. Dude, Just like yes. a discussion about Christmas movies or something. Maybe uh maybe we get into the tier list stuff. Maybe we run a tournament of something. Um I know that like we were talking Callum about the whole idea of like the the bond the bond, bond themes and we were then that got us talking about the idea of maybe doing some kind of a tier list of Simpsons characters. Like that could be fun. Like let's just do it all. Yeah. If I could, if I could maximize the amount of time in a day and you know cram a week in a day all the time, that'd be so good. I would get so much more work done. Or if I had clones, man, if I had clones and I could just be like, hey, you, you do the the work stuff. I do the fun stuff. No, they would be the bad batch. Yeah, <laughs> be like, hey, you, you go exercise and you go cook dinner and you go clean things and you do the manual editing or whatever i'm gonna sit down and talk about shit you know <laughs> but if you enjoyed us sitting down and talking about shit and you uh are not subscribed make sure you subscribe and just stay tuned essentially for whatever else is coming your way because whatever is happening you'll find it here you'll find it on smart comment you'll find it under a mango tree i yeah. I'm hoping that the response from this is kind of on the positive side of things. But if you are more negative about stuff and you want to drop a comment below, go ahead. Just voice your opinion and tell us what you think. And we'll respond to things in the comments and everything. And, and yes, we know that we're scatterbrained. We're sorry. We are very scatterbrained, but we hope you uh, like to bounce it around with us at the very least. And if they are, do have anything new that happens throughout this whole setup and they put new trailers and whatever like that, then I'll be talking about it on the Week in Geek. And well, not talking about it, I'll be writing about it. And maybe more articles coming out soon. Maybe we just hop on another podcast type of thing. Maybe we do bonus features. Whatever happens, happens. And we hope you join us for that too. But that's going to do us in for this one. It's time for us to geek out. See you later, everybody. <laughs>